That was a look back at Sepang 2017. 2018 promises to be even more action-packed. Welcome, everybody, to a soggy Sepang. We've had a lot of heavy rain in the last hour and a half or so. The track is a bit damp offline. We've just had a single-seater support race in which those cars on the slick tyres right at the very end started to come into their own. But wet tyres were the way to go and the drivers on the wets were the winners. So now the teams have got a bit of a quandary. I would imagine that slicks will be the way they will opt and then tiptoe round at the start. But we will see because in many cases it is going to be the uh, AM driver, the lower graded driver behind the wheel. So welcome to the Blancpain GT Series Asia for 2018. And as the cars will make their way round very shortly out onto the grid, uh, we look forward to what promises to be a great race. David Addison, trackside. And before we get too engrossed in what's promising to be a fascinating hour, let's have a quick look at the Sepang circuit with local hero Alex Young. Hi, I'm Alex Young, Phoenix Racing Asia and three-time cup champion. Welcome to my circuit spotlight here at my home track in Sepang. So when you start the race, you come down here into turn one, and this is the first of our five exciting parts of the track I wanted to highlight. It's a massive long straight for turn one, 1.1 kilometers, and a GD3 car does about 250, 260 kilometers here. There's always a lot of excitement here, lots of action, lots of bumping, especially on the first lap. Second point of interest is the fastest part of the track. It's turn five and six. You can see the turn five in the background, it's fast, it's sweeping, it's fourth gear, 200 kilometers per hour. You try and go through here without any braking, you just lift up the throttle ever so slightly, and then you try and squeeze back the full throttle before turn six. You can see it bleeds straight into a right-hander, turn six here. When you get this right, your heart is just pumping. It's so much fun. So the third point of interest has to be turn nine. So much action happens here. So much overtaking and, and coming together. But to overtake here, you have to be fast through turn eight. We always see cars coming together in this corner. It's a great place to watch. Fourth most exciting feature of this track is these sequence of corners. You see turn 12 in the distance over there. Um, it's a very fast left-hander which goes straightly into turn 13, another very fast right-hander but then it bleeds straight into turn 14, which tightens up so much. But in my opinion, this is the toughest corner on the track to get right. The last exciting feature on this track is actually the last corner because there's so much overtaking here. There's a massive kilometer straight that leads onto it and a massive kilometer straight that leads out of it. So you always see drivers jockeying for position through here. And the drivers who are most creative with those lines as they try and overtake are normally the ones that come off best. So those are my five highlights of Sepang. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. So it is a great circuit, the Sepang International Circuit. It's five and a half kilometers long. It's got some steep climbs and some steep drops as well, and some very long straights, which does allow the driver a bit of a breather, but it also takes the toll on the engines, of course, at high res for long periods of time. So you can see the cars making their way down to the end of the pit lane. Very shortly, they will be out on track. And the track itself starts with this long run down towards turn one, the hairpin that drops downhill. You go left at turn two, uh, and then halfway around the lap, speed starts to pick up in that second sector. But look at sector three, because you've got a couple of nice long straights in there and some more flowing corners. And piece it together, and the pole time, two minutes, 3.3 seconds, courtesy of Dennis Lynn. Five and a half kilometers, 15 corners, and 60 minutes of racing. Mandatory pit stops as well need to be made to change driver. And it's 90 seconds for a GT3 car, 125 seconds for a GT4 car. Now, as I say, it did rain. The rain has stopped. Let's find out what it's like on the grid because Renai Matu is there soaking up the sunshine. Hi, David. Soaking up the sunshine and soaking wet. It is a hot day out here and Sepang International Circuit has turned it up for race one of the season. I'm so excited. Now, it is really hot. We have seen some rain earlier this this morning, this afternoon, but it uh, looks like it's sunny for now. Now, lots and lots of drivers are leaving the pits, getting ready and 
I can see that they're going on their way around. We'll track down, we'll track down some of those drivers to have a chat to you very, very soon. It's been amazing. You can see a buzz about this one. The second season starting, plenty of buzz, David. Thanks, Renai. And there you see the Mercedes AMG safety car, which hopefully we won't need, but it's there just in case people slither off the road and end up in strife as the cars now make their way round to the grid. So as the 60 minutes of action will get underway shortly here at Sepang, the next stop would be, after the two races here, Thailand at the Chang International Circuit at Vuriram. Then we go twice to Japan, Suzuka and Fuji, and as last year end in China, Shanghai. But a new venue this year, a new track, Ningbo International Speed Park, mid-October. And last year in the wet, the championship showdown was a stunner. We hope we expect the same this season. So the grid will be formed very shortly. I've mentioned that there are 29 cars across 10 different brands as well. Let's have a closer look at the competitors with Renai. drivers from 19 different nationalities all trying to make their mark. Now as the championships grow, so too has the number of manufacturers. Ten brands will be represented here. And this is the first time we'll see full season entries from Japan, Australia, Korea and Taiwan. I think uh, we all know Kong Kong uh, GT Series Asia is the most competitive and most uh, well-known uh, race series in Asia now. So I think it's important to bring my team here to uh, have experience to race against with uh, all top team here in Asia. So I think it's a, a big step for us. We've got uh, new sponsors and they are uh, pushing me to, to switch to different manufacturers. So I think it's also a good challenge for us to try uh, uh, working with uh, Ferrari um, more. So. I think it's a pretty good uh, 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 change. Uh, it's always special racing at home. You know, Sipang's a great track. Just love driving here. We've got a new co-driver, Kyung Wee. He's only been racing two years. But for a guy that's only been racing two years, he's really, really good. And every time he goes out, he goes faster and faster. Um, I'm, I'm a co-driver. I have to be partnered with a, with a bronze driver. And the way it is, there aren't that many bronze drivers in Asia. It's tricky. It's hard to be to get the same consistency, you know, because cause the AMs are... They don't race for a living, you know, so it's, it's tricky to get that consistency throughout the whole year. So, I mean, we finished on the podium a few times, but um, it wasn't quite what we wanted. Raffaello, uh, talk to me about um, Blancpain GT Series Asia. You've been here before. What's your experience been like and what's it like to come back for more? Yeah, it's really good to be here. I will do all the season ex except uh, Thailand. So I'm really happy to, to be here. The championship is really good. Group M Racing is a, is a good team. I did with them last year this race. The Mercedes MG is, is really a good car, so I can't complain about that. Yeah, it was a good lap, but I mean, we can still improve it. It's only a few practice, so there is still work to do, but I mean, it's a good start. You come into this second year as the defending champion. Give me a bit of a comment on about what that means to be the GT4 champion. Well, um, the pressure is on. There were three other manufacturers joining us uh, this year, which is a very good thing. Uh, but that means the competition is very fierce with some really good drivers. We are still a bit short of pace, but we, you never know with, in, uh, uh, with a one hour race and um, we see how the tire degradation will do and the heat and everything else. We just got to keep scoring points every single round. Uh, because last year we missed one round and still came out on top. Uh, which is quite lucky. So uh, we're just going to keep our head down, keep it cool, and uh, not trying to do anything stupid and just keep scoring the points. So some powerhouses return and some brand new teams join the fray. With some spanking new livery and interesting lineups, we're all set for an incredible season. So we are set. The grid is starting to form. It's taken a little longer because the drivers have elected to have more than one pass of the start line. In other words, come down through the pit lane. That way they get an extra installation lap. That way they get a proper idea about tyre choice. I'm still convinced it's going to be slicked, really, uh, because it's drying all the time. And although the rain earlier might have got rid of the humidity, it's back and it's back with a vengeance now. So the drivers sweating in the cockpits. Pole position is where you find the Lamborghini of Dennis Lind for this race. And he's going to be joined in that car by Martin Kodric. And he is standing on the grid with Renai. 
Okay, Martin, is it hot enough for you out here? Yeah, very hot, especially now after this rain. Um, yeah, the humidity is crazy, so yeah, as you can see, it's uh, pretty whammy. But it's a good place to be starting from key one, right? Yeah, obviously. Uh, I mean, front row, no one's in front of you, so yeah, the best possible place. Uh, Dennis did a really good job in qualifying, so yeah, we're happy and hopefully stay there. Okay, what is the game plan? The game plan is to remain first, pull the gap and uh, control the race until the end. Okay, all the best with that. Back to you, David. Martin Codrich and Dennis Lynn raced against each other a couple of years back in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo. Codrich comes with a good reputation, uh, having raced in other GT programs of late. And Dennis Lynn was a real hero in Lamborghini racing. And we didn't really see the best of him last year because the team that he was placed with uh, weren't all that stunning. But Martin Codrich, from his experience with uh, Barwell in GT racing last year, Dennis Lynn's ability and experience of Lamborghinis make it a formidable combination. And Dennis on pole position. He's never raced here before. but. Uh, didn't phase the Great Dane as he put it on pole position this morning. He will have alongside him the Ferrari there of Leo Yi, who admitted to messing up, I think was what he was trying to say, uh, the final corner on two laps. But therefore, reckon he could have gone faster. But second on the grid is certainly a good achievement because he's another driver uh, relatively new to this circuit. He raced in the championship at Shanghai last year. But other than that, Japanese Formula 3, the AFR series, Formula Renault Alps, Euro Formula Open, that doesn't really tell you much about... Uh, Sepang. So it's been a good effort by the Ferrari driver and sharing the Ferrari with him is Nick Foster who has switched from Porsches to Ferraris this season and he's with Renai. Okay Nick, uh, front row. Yeah not a bad start obviously uh, here for the first time with the Ferrari. Um, Hub Auto Corsa, first time uh, with the Ferrari, sort of a new team that's established from China GT into Bompane, so lots of new stuff, and to start the first race of the season in, in P2 is really, really good shape for us, and uh, yeah, the weather's thrown some, some craziness at us, but I think the track's mostly dry, and Leo's done a good job so far this weekend, and we just go out there and see what happens. Well, it wouldn't be Sapang if there wasn't a chance of rain. Um, this is you returning to Blancpain for a second year. I mean, what brings you back? I mean, everything really. Uh, last year I got to drive three rounds, so not the full series, but I came in um, and we had really successful time, um, two podiums, a pole position, so to have the opportunity to come back in the Ferrari as well on top of that and, and challenge for the, for the whole season and the championship and everything was, was very, very appealing. So uh, happy to be back, happy to be here in Sepang, not happy to be sweating my balls off, but other than that, it's uh, good fun so far. Okay, well, all the best for this season and this race. No back to you, David. Nice image, isn't it, of Nick Foster's um, temperature problems. There on the grid for third, Nico Bastien, who is out of the car, helmet off, taking on some much-needed liquid before a stint. It's only a short stint, relatively speaking, pit window between the 25 and 35 minutes. But even if you're doing 35 minutes, it's a long 35 minutes in these temperatures. And a point being made yesterday by Dennis Lind is that it's not that bad when you're at racing speed because there are little vents that get the air into the car, even if it's warm air, but at least it's air and it circulates. But when you're sitting on the grid like this or you're in a long pit stop or even behind the safety car and you're going slower and there's less air or no air getting into the car, then life becomes very unpleasant indeed. So all the drivers hoping that we don't get any interruptions, no safety car periods, and that they don't have to stay in the car for a long pit stop as the problem is rectified. You just looked at Frankie Cheng's uh, Audi, car three, which lines up on the outside of the second row of the grid. The third row is going to have uh, number 888, Bryce Bosey's, Mercedes, and then there on the inside of the fourth row, 23, Eduardo Liberati in the Nissan. Good to have Nissan in the championship this year, run by KCMG, that car, and Florian Strauss is the other driver. But between the Mercedes and the Nissan is an Audi of last year's runners-up, Aditya Patel and Mitch Gilbert. New team running the car for this year. Mitch can explain all to Renai. Okay, Mitch and Aditya are just up ahead of you. Now, you guys have won here before. You won the first race of the inaugural season. How are you feeling about this round? Yeah, I think it's good. You know, Aditya did a good lap. He put the car in, in six. So I think we can still you know, aim for a good result from there. It's not been the easiest for us so far. Um, we've been struggling a little bit with pace, but I think there's no reason why we can't be aiming for the podium. Okay, um, does losing out to the championship by just one point last year make you even more determined this time round? Yeah, I think by the time you get to March, you kind of forget, you know, you forget about that again. And it's, it's, in, the, it's in the past, and right now we're just focused on doing what we can and, and just trying to do what we did last year, which was, was win every race we could. Okay. All the best, Mitch. Okay. Back to you, David. Malaysian born, Australian, Mitch Gilbert. So it's a kind of home circuit, this, seeing that we don't, brackets yet, go to Australia. Around there might be an interesting one. But uh, Mitch Gilbert is the driver 
for the second stint of the 86 Audi. Uh, the OD racing car, WRT running the cars this year, the car, uh, and of course it's a team with an amazing track record in international GT racing, in European GT racing, so once it's got a handle on these circuits, expect the car to fly. But saying that it's lacking a bit of pace, sixth on the grid, Aditya Patel, the Indian driver, goes first, and uh, Gilbert then for the second stint. The circuit drying all the time, and we look forward to what promises to be a very interesting race indeed here. And as the engineers gradually start to drift away, and also double check tyres as well. We have a mole on the grid who's gone off to discover who is doing what, but I'm pretty sure slicks is the way to go now. You can see there there are fewer and fewer damp patches. Track temperature, 41.7 degrees. The humidity, gulp, 76% at the moment. Track temperature rising as well, oh joy. Uh, and so as we look down onto the grid, the uh, drivers preparing for the stint, bottle of water in hand now, drinks bottle fitted in the car, and it's going to be a hard hour, uh, this, especially for the AMs, the gentleman drivers, who, yes, have to be fit, but they haven't got the opportunity to spend hours in the gym because they've got businesses to run. Uh, so where it's a, a genuine pro-AM combination, or even in GT4, of course, AM-AM, uh, the drivers there are going to be really glad to get out of the car. Five minutes to go to the start of round one of Blancpain GT Series Asia. This championship that started last season was an instant hit. Big grids, the grids got bigger and bigger and bigger anyway. Great racing, a championship that went down to the wire with the last race. Hunter Abbott, the pro champion last year, has been upgraded, his classification by the FIA for this season. So it's harder really for him to find a, a pro-am combination because he's effectively the pro now. Uh, so he's uh, gone away to racing other things this year, but he was a good champion for last season. And the runners-up, Aditya Patel and Mitch Gilbert, are here, but it's still a quality lineup as well. Lots of interesting names. One, Josh Burden, will come to you during the race. He's on pole position for race two, uh, so he's another driver to keep an eye to. Uh, in GT4, we've got lots of new brands, including Mercedes, and one of whom uh, is the driver Reinhold Renger, Russell Ward, the co-driver, and the GT4 Mercedes one to watch. Let's go back to Renai. Okay, great place to be starting from, pole position, right? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so first time for us in Sepang, first time in this league and first time with this car, so uh, could be not better. Okay, what is the game plan today? <laughs> the game plan is that we uh, continue in the first position, definitely, that we uh, really keep it. And then when I jump in the car, when Russell overtakes it to me, then I try to keep a good place and win, definitely. That's our goal, yeah. So this is your first time in GT4 as well, no? Yeah, uh, usually I drove the GT3 category, so it's uh, different now, but GT4 is a big challenge and it's a nice field already and uh, yeah, it's interesting. Is it hot enough here in Malaysia? It's pretty hot, I tell you. I'm not used to, but uh, it's uh, beautiful, I like. All the best for you and your teammate today. Thank you very much. Back to you, David. Ryan Hotrenger, somebody who's been racing a long, long time, go back to the late 90s and you find him in the VLN and the uh, German Touring Car Challenge, which was the sort of production saloon Group N type series. He had a Golf GTI in that. Three minutes to go to the start, had a few years away and has come back in the 24-hour series and even did a race in the States in the IMSA WeatherTech Challenge last year, but now committed to Blancpain GT Series Asia and the three-minute board shown. As far as we can tell, everybody is on slicks. So it's getting brighter. The sun is burning through again. The track is drying all the time and uh, it won't be long, as I say, before the track is bone dry. So the cars will be released very shortly and uh, then we will be in business for 60 minutes of racing. We've not been told to the contrary, so I'm assuming it's a, a conventional start. Often when it's a wet track you get a safety car start, but I don't think it's fully wet now. I can see race director Ravin standing on the gantry just overlooking the grid. Uh, he'll be having a final assessment of track conditions. I was stood on the grid a little while ago and it was quite slippy underfoot, but I'm sure Pirelli's finest will cope admirably and we can anticipate some vigorous weaving uh, for some of that green flag lap to bring up the temperatures and the pressures. So, round one of Blancpain GT Series Asia is good to go. What a grid. 29 cars, 10 different brands. You've got Audi, you've got Ferrari, you've got Nissan, you've got Lamborghini, you've got Aston Martin. Honda, the new NSX, is represented. You've got Porsche in both GT3 and GT4, Mercedes in GT3 and GT4 as well. And in McLaren with a GT4 car and BMW with the GT4 M4 as well and it is all the best brands that go head to head on some of the region's best circuits indefinitely the region's best GT championship the 
grid formed. Lamborghini and Ferrari at the front. It's a real fight of the Italian brands. Row two, Mercedes versus Audi, a real fight of the German brands. So there's a lot at stake here. Drivers, teams, and reputations all on the line. The grid cleared. It'll be a rolling start, of course. So you can expect the safety car to blast away, the Mercedes AMG safety car. There it is. We'll accelerate clear and then give the drivers a chance to catch up and then get themselves into formation. The one minute board is shown and then hold on to your hats because on a road that is damp off line but drying all the time, cars on slicks, mighty amounts of power, we are good to go racing. Last year, if you recall, the opening race had an incident away from the grid on the start of the race itself and that was the end of Richard Wee's GT3 McLaren and of his season in that car in fact because I think he decided that GT4 was the place for him. He raced in and won at Fuji and he and Mott Wen Sun are back for a full season in the GT4 class this year in the lone McLaren on the grid run by Clearwater Racing and they've got opposition as I mentioned from Porsche with the Cayman uh, from Mercedes with the AMG GT4 and BMW with the M4 GT4 there. Dennis Lynn then for pole position and as the safety car accelerates away we are about to see the cars rumble away for the final green flag lap, ready for Blancpain GT Series Asia round one. Lights go green, the cars release then. This final opportunity to have a look at where there might be a few puddles, might be slippy offline, and to get the warmth into the rubber to bring the pressures up. And Dennis Lind leads them away. The Lamborghini run by the FFF racing team by ACM to give it its full title. It's a team that has also undergone some changes over the winter. Some personnel have gone, new people brought in. And uh, Sean Fu Song Yang, the team owner, means business for this season. He wants wins, doesn't want to make up the numbers like last year. So it's going to be Dennis Lind who starts number 19 from pole position. Leo Yi alongside him. Third on the grid, Nico Bastian's Mercedes and Frankie Chang lines up in the number three Audi. Fifth on the grid is Bryce Bosey alongside Aditya Patel. And then it's going to be the Nissan in the hands of Eduardo Liberati starting on the inside of row four with Anthony Liu alongside. He will go from eighth on the grid. That's the car shared with Josh Burden who's on pole position for the second race of the weekend. So 37, the absolute racing. Uh, Audi is certainly one to watch. Then you have Hiraki Nagai starting on the fifth row of the grid. And alongside him is uh, Hiroshi Noguchi who's in the gravel in qualifying. Aidan Reed is next on the grid. Lining up alongside him is Shea Davis with the seventh row, Yuki Tamiguchi and Juwan Xiao for company. Then you have Andrew Kim and alongside him Rick Yoon in the Aston Martin. Neota Takeda and Young Lim are on the next row of the grid. Morris Chen shares the tenth row with Philip Ma in the Arrows Racing Honda. Then you've got Andrew McPherson running his own team and the only Australian team to the championship. Russell Ward's GT4 Mercedes alongside Takeyuki Kinoshita's BMW and Ringo Chong's Mercedes next ahead of Frankie and Richard Wee. Then it's Ken Arata and Brian Lee. And the last car on the grid is going to be the Porsche Cayman in the hands of Keo Chang. Down towards Down towards turn 13 comes the pole sitting Lamborghini, and now they will start to get themselves into formation. So it starts to become this Noah's Ark 2x2 two two situation. With there you can see the Lamborghini on pole position, and some comes through. That looks completely bone dry. There are still, as I say, one or two little damp patches offline, and that's now the challenge for the drivers on slicks to know where they can push and if they need to overtake, especially on this run down to turn one where the grip levels will be. I think pretty much everybody's going to be a pioneer on this first lap of the race. Remember, it's an hour long. There are pit stops. Everybody must do a driver change. And the field now bunches up in this two by two formation. The rolling starts very tightly controlled these days in not just Brock Pound, uh, Asia, but also in Europe as well, in as much as it's not just enough to be side by side. You must be in one neat line across your grid box. So. See, it's a little bit ragged, it's not even get more in line now, but you must be in the wheel tracks of the car ahead, not darting out to the left or the right, and then cars all over the road. People have been penalised in the past for not being within the demarked right lines on the road. You can see what's happening now, they're all coming out of the corner and staying one behind the other. Only when you get to the line can you dive out and go for the overtake. 
Ravin, the race director, stands on the gantry, ready to change the lights if he's happy. It's from red to green, and we go racing. It was a late call, so the front row of the grid slow away. Very slow out of the box was Leo Yi. Dennis Lind recovers. And look at Frankie Chang in the number three out. He's trying to get between the two of them. Then they come down towards turn one. Dennis Lind will lead the way, diving up the inside. He's Bryce Bosey in the silver and blue Mercedes. Can't do it. Leo Yi has managed to hang on to second place round the outside, and then being hung out to dry at Eve Patel in the red Audi. Can he fight back at turn two? He can just but it's going to be Dennis Lind who leads the way up into second place Nico Bastian there in the Mercedes having started on the second row and they're gapping the rest of them as they climb up hills for the first time not quite side by side for the race lead up towards turn four a challenge made there but it didn't come off for Nico Bastian in third place it is Leo Yi in fourth is Patel out wide goes Bryce Mosey losing one losing two places as he comes up to turn five Lind leads the way, and he with Nico Bastian tucked up behind him and getting away from the rest of them because at the moment Leo Yi is acting a little bit like the stopper in the bottle here, trying to keep everybody else at bay and doing exactly what he has to do to hang on to third place, but that's allowing the top two to break clear. Over the kerb goes Bastian. The German driver chases the day. Dennis Lind, Lamborghini leading on lap one here of Blancpain GT Series Asia. It's race one of 12 here in Malaysia. They break for turn nine, climb the hill. There, a challenge made against the 991 Porsche of Aiden Reed. Right up behind him, look, is the Nissan. That's Eduardo Liberati hustling along behind him. You've got the recovering Bryce Bosey, then Frankie Chang, who also got blocked in the traffic a little bit off the line as the car sprint now round turn 12 down the hill. And that is the Aston Martin that's off the road already of Rick Yoon, who found himself in the walls a little bit last year on more than one occasion. And the Safety car is being deployed. The safety car will be deployed on the opening lap of the race. So any advantage you'd pulled is about to disappear. <laughs> and also, if you cool down with the air in the car, that's about to go away as well because it's going to be a reduced pace. There's the safety car straight out on track, ready to collect everybody. And the field will slow, the field will bunch. And so at the end of lap one of this hour of racing, out comes the safety car and it's to try and get the Aston Martin out of harm's way. Lind leads. Second is Nico Bastian. A car shared by Patrick Niederhauser, who from memory was Dennis Lind's Raton racing teammate in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo two years ago. Leo Yi third. Fourth, the Audi, you can see it there, Didi Di Patel. And there is the reason for the safety car. It's got going, so we should hopefully go back to racing this time. But as that car got damaged, it looked slightly other lopsided and or crab-like to me, suggesting it's had a, a big nudge somewhere. So that perhaps accounts for why it was off the road in the first place. And so Rick Yoon, the man behind the wheel, he had a pretty torrid time on occasions last season in the Audi. And sadly for Rick, the banker, it's not been a great start to this season in Blancpain GT Series Asia either. So the safety car growls its way uphill. There's definitely something awry with the Aston. It's low, it is a puncture, surely. Yes, though you can see it's off the rim. So it'll be heading for the pit lane. The question then is whether it can stay on the lead lap. If you're on the lead lap and there's another safety car, that hauls you back into the mix. There down the pit road also comes number seven Audi, which is Andrew Kim. That looks like he's got a puncture as well. So straight away, two cars badly delayed. And the championship officials on hand to oversee the pit stop. Uh, damage and a damaged tyre. But I wonder whether that's done some suspension damage as well. The team wants a long look at that. And whether that car goes back into the race is debatable. If it does, I suspect it will become a test session for tomorrow because you don't get a warm up, you go straight into the race. Uh, so rather than think about places and points, it's going to just make sure the car is fit and well. So when the lights go out on top of the safety car, we know it's the sign to go racing. And it could be this time. There out of the car is the frustrated Andrew Kim, and we will go racing this time. We understand safety cars in this time. Andrew Kim, who's only been racing for a couple of seasons, has not had a very long debut in this championship, sad to say, as also into the pit lane has just limped the Aston Martin of uh, Renew and Adrian De Silva. So the cars are working downhill at the moment towards turn 12. There you can see the damage, so there was certainly contact that turned around the Aston Martin. So a clash and then a broken wheel, you can see the way that's malformed. We'll go racing this time, Lind versus Bastien in third place, Leo Yi. And then in fourth is Aditya Patel, fifth 
is Aidan Reed and sixth Eduardo Liberati. So you've got Lamborghini Mercedes from Ferrari, Audi, Porsche, Nissan. Six different brands in the top six. Not bad going, is it? And as they weave their way up now to turn 15, the Aston's going to drop a lap for sure. And we will be back with the green flag this time. The officials are ready. The lights will go to green to say we're back racing. And as the field accelerates now out of turn 15, you can't overtake until you get to the timing line, which is where the flag is there. We're back racing. And Dennis Lynn tries to escape up the road. Have a look at the Ferrari in third place because Leo Yi is right there on the back of Nico Bastian. And now he's almost alongside. Bastian tries to cover the move and he does so. To the outside goes Leo Yi. Do we get a change for fifth place? Have a look at the Nissan. Round the outside, the blue and white Nissan, Eduardo Liberati, no, can't quite do it. So Aidan Reed, who was a real gun in Shanghai last year in the Lamborghini, fends him off, but they touch, the Porsche gets sideways. He manages to hang on to the place, though. Aidan Reed is the leader, drops downhill out of turn three now. Dennis Lynn leading the way and trying to make good his escape, but this time around, Nico Bastian is going with him. Is it Nissan ahead of Porsche? They were side by side up the hill, but back through on the inside goes Aidan Reed. Bryce Bosi there, next in the silver and blue Gripper M Mercedes running behind them, and then in eighth place, you've got Frankie Cheng, but now Dennis Lind is starting to stretch that margin once more as they come out of turn six. Battle is on here, Liberace is there, he's ahead of Aidan Reed, and Bryce Posey looking for a way through, so this is the shuffle for fifth and sixth and seventh, the Nissan powering its way through, makes a great noise, the Nissan, it sort of booms past you, and a flash of the lights from Aditya Patel more in hope than in anticipation that he's going to be allowed through by Leo Yi as there. Chang up the inside of Bryce Bosi. Can't find a way through. And right up behind them as well is the Ferrari number eight, which has got for the opening stint of the race, Hiraki Nagai at the wheel. Another Audi in a big hurry in the background as well, looking to try to gain places. He's 37, which is the Anthony Lou Josh Burden car. Anthony Lou winner here last year in race two in a Ferrari. He's the man at the wheel of it at the moment as they drop downhill. GT4 currently is being led by the Russell Ward Mercedes ahead of last year's champions Jean-Marc Merlin and Frank Yu. Frank Yu at the wheel of the car. Up towards the end of the lap, then they come, powering their way towards it. Look at all the rubber chunking on the road already. Into turn 15 they come. The end of the first proper racing lap, if you like. It's going to be Dennis Lind who leads the way. Now, at the restart, he was four tenths to the good. Now he's nine tenths up the road. In second place, Nico Bastian dropping away just slightly. Third is Leo Yi. In fourth, Aditya Patel still flashing the lights in the WRT OD Racing. Audi looks to the inside, but he's going to be caught soon. Look at the way that Eduardo Liberati closes right up there under braking in the Nissan. Liberati number 23, closing, closing, closing. Next single seater racer, Pereira Cup. Italia front runner, GT Asia champion, very experienced peddler is Liberati. And so now, as the leaders climb uphill, that lead gap to the eye looks like it's coming down a little bit because uh, Lynn to Bastian was nine tenths at the start of this lap. There's the fight raging on for third. I didn't tell the Indian driver is now right on the tail of the third place Ferrari. And we confirm the number seven Audi out of the race. News from the pits that the damage too great. So the uh, number seven absolute racing entry of Adley Fong and Andrew Kim going no further. Dennis Lind cares not, though, what he's bothered about, getting away from Nico Bastian, who is doing a good job behind him here. Bastian, who has become one of those VLM specialists around the Nordschleife, that was impressive last year in Blancpain GT Series Endurance Cup in Europe, and now translating to the Asian Series very well indeed. As to the inside line goes, I didn't even tell, but it's hard to overtake there in a big, wide GT car. And all he's done is compromise his run out of the corner and give Eduardo Liberati a chance to challenge. Downhill they come. In 20 seconds. A double wave yellows and a double wave yellow is a precursor to a full course yellow in 20 seconds. F FCY is... bought up. FCY bought up. Ravin, the race director, FCY bought up, and that is because of the yellow Ferrari number 28 in the gravity. Caught a glimpse of Boris Chen off the road. So we're going to go full course yellow. Everybody slows. There's the Ferrari. That's the reason that we've got this full course yellow. So we've had a safety car early on to calm people down. Straight away, we get another incident, this time full course yellow. So that means you hold your gap to the car in front, because if you're all doing the regulation speed, you shouldn't close, you shouldn't fall back. And if gaps do come down markedly, all the data is there for the championship officials to monitor and assess. 
and the stewards will have a look and see if penalties need to be applied. So that means that if you're the leader and you've got a 9 tenths advantage, it should remain at that and they come across the line. So it's not like a safety car where everybody bunches up. You slow to the delta speed, the gaps remain, but it could be a lap or two this. It also has the advantage of everybody slowing, first of all, to your regulation speed, rather than all concertinering up to a safety car. And incidents can often happen as the car ahead of you breaks and you're not expecting it. There's this chain reaction. But hopefully it won't take that long to hook the 28 Ferrari out of the gravel. This car shared by Tim Slade, another Australian supercar star, and he will be the gun to start tomorrow's race. It's the starting stint each. Time to catch breath. We've done effectively 11 minutes, but we don't seem to have had a huge amount of racing because of the two interruptions. But as the field comes over the timing line, we have the car then in the gravel bed, and as soon as that is safe, uh, we can go racing. You don't need to wait to the end of the lap. You can just withdraw the green flags as soon as the message gets through to the drivers. Often there's a 10 second warning, and then we are back in business. So as the cars climb the hill, there is the Ferrari out of the gravel. Oh. Is it about to go back through the gravel? The snatch vehicle has gone into the gravel again. So surely they're not going to try and drag it. Well, they are going to try and drag it all the way across, which might not be the best thing for a Ferrari. What expensive, delicate bits of kit, don't forget, GT3 cars. There, limbering up for resumption of battle, 991, which is Aiden Reed, 888 Bryce Bosey. And yeah, all the way through the gravel for Morris Chen in number 28 Ferrari. Uh, Morris, who began late in life, really, in his late 20s, back in 2004 in the Asian Touring Car Series, the Taiwanese driver, and uh, has raced in saloon cars briefly in Block Pan in Europe in the very first year of the Endurance Series with a McLaren, which was not the most user-friendly of cars, so he backed away from that, concentrated on Asian Touring Cars for the rest of the season. He's raced in the Malaysian Touring Car Series, and two, three years ago, three years ago, the first Taiwanese driver to race at Le Mans. Finished sixth in the GT am class green flag in short notice that then explains to the teams over the radio green flag at short notice so the teams tell the drivers to be on their toes and we are going green and there straight away at the inside goes leo yi he was on his toes quicker than was nico bastian so we're away in racing and on the green flag there, Dennis Lind tries to accelerate away, but straight away the change for second place. And Nico Bastian back up on the inside line, up the curve in the Mercedes. He did not like being stung out of that second place. He's trying to fight back as they come down the hill. And Dennis Lind is away and gone. And Dicky Patel in the background, fourth, fifth, and Aguada Liberati in the blue and white Nissan. And Nico Bastian closing, closing right up onto the back of the Ferrari into turn 14. But he can't find a way through there. Cars now power their way up towards turn 15 and the end of the lap. And the race leader then trying to build this gap, Dennis Lynn. But Nico Bastian looks like he's got the pace to find a way back in the second place. If only he can find the room, and he does on the inside. Not quite able to level. He had a look. He's trying to prise open the door. It's a long corner, though, that deceptively long. And as he comes out the other side of it, the Mercedes just ahead. Now, let's see what's got more grunt and go. Mercedes or Ferrari? They are absolutely level as they come across the line. 16 thousandths ahead was the Ferrari. Down towards turn one they go. Inside line Ferrari, outside line Mercedes. That shows you the BOP works because neither had a true advantage in that long, long straight line run down towards turn one. You might anticipate the Mercedes to have more grunt, but the Ferrari, Leo Yi at the wheel, fends him off. Downhill they come. And look, Aditya Patel has caught right up as well. The opening lap incident, by the way, between Kim, Rick Yoon, and also another couple of cars that were involved in that, namely uh, Tani Gucci and also 45, which is near to Takeda. It's all under investigation, so it was a four-car tangle on lap one that's being looked at. So here you've got second, third, fourth and fifth, running together now. Nico Bastian crawling all over the back of the Ferrari, and again tries to force the issue, but he can't quite get up the inside. This is the part of the circuit more than anywhere where track limits are an issue, so you make a move, it doesn't work, you run wide, and straight away you get a finger wagged at you, and Nico Bastian then has to temper his pace, he's up the curb but not over it, down towards turn nine, not a passing place, the drivers tell you, but they're all having a go to try and unsettle the car ahead, Bastian attacking and defending, he's got Patel breathing right down his neck in the blue over red Audi, and then Eduardo Liberati next in the queue as the race leader is getting away. This is absolutely great news for the leader as up the inside over the curb, Nico Bastian elbows out, goes through, takes second place back again. 
downhill. Leo Yi fights back, has another look to the inside, can't do it there. Patel crawls all over the rear of them in the Audi. There's a gap and a, maybe a gap on the inside. Yes, Patel commits, he goes through. Third place in the Audi. So Leo Yi, who was second at the start of the lap, drops back into fourth place. And Dennis Lind getting away inexorably now because they're all holding each other up by battling. It's great to watch. Nose to tail here. You've got Patel and Leo Yi trying to retake third place. But Nico Bastien back into second is getting away. Inside line Patel, outside line Ye Leo Yi. And where is Eduardo Liberati? He's almost with them now in the Nissan. Nico Bastian comes over the timing line, getting clear of the opposition for third place, where Adi Patel's Audi just out dragged the Ferrari in a straight line. And then you've got Eduardo Liberati going through in fifth place. The next battle pack, sixth, headed by Aidan Reed. Behind him is Frankie Cheng, then Bryce Bosi in the Mercedes. Then you've got the Anthony Lou Audi. And to round out the top ten, it is going to be Shea Davis in number 911, 911. So the Kraft Bamboo Racing Cars bookending this little battle, which is for sixth down to tenth. And Aiden Reed in 991 hanging on to the place for the moment. He was the 11th qualifier, just ahead of Shea Davis on the grid. So the leaders are on that number seven as they climb the hill over the brow. Back into view they come, and there, look, leading the way in this group is the charging Aiden Reed. And that is Patel in strife. Has he run wide? Yes. Has he got a puncture? Maybe. It was very, very wide indeed. And I'm just looking to see if the car has got a tyre problem or if it's a mechanical problem. Aditya Patel dropping down the order. He slots into the pack. But again, I think he's going offline. Isn't he going into turn seven? Let's have a look in the back. Yeah, he's up the kerb. It's as though the car doesn't want to turn. He might, in fairness, be getting out of the way, knowing he's got a problem. But I just fear that that car might be in tyre difficulties. We'll see what happens when he comes towards the pit lane. Surely he's going to have to limp in at the end of the lap. But now, Aditya Patel in the first sector was going well, but he's had the problem up through turn four and onwards. That's where he's been in the walls and the car going slowly. So, having fought its way up into third place, the OD Racing Audi, run by WRT, not absolute this year, is falling away again. Chunks of rubber on the road there at turn 15 and up towards the hairpin at the end of the lap. Dennis Lynn leads the way, Nico Bastian chasing on behind him, and look, there's no sign of Aditya Patel now as the Audi tumbles, tumbles, tumbles down the order. Again, the task is going to be to keep the car on the lead lap. Frankie Cheng, number three Audi, battling there with 911. Shea Davis, the Australian, come out of Carrera Cup and Australian supercars running with him. Up towards the timing line, 42 minutes still to go. Dennis Lynn leading by six seconds now. A mighty job being turned in here. Through they go, down towards turn one once more. The sister Lamborghini 11th and a spin for another of the Lambos. That's the AMAT Motorsport car of Le Patron. Andrew McPherson has got it wrong. That looks like it's down at turn 14. Now, where is Patel? He's not yet ventured out of turn 15, as far as I'm aware. So that car in real difficulties. And also coming into the pit lane is 97, which is the Indigo Racing Mercedes of Juan Xiao. Patel comes down the pit lane. There he is. Does it look low, the left rear corner? Or am I imagining things? Oh, no, it looks smoky. That's even more serious. So, a very rare mechanical drama for an Audi GT3 car. That engine cover is off. And last year's championship runners-up do not have a happy start to the season. And as I say, it's a pretty rare occurrence that you see a smoky car and the hand across the throat from the engineer says, no, forget it, we're out. So we'll dispatch Renai to the smoky Audi and see what she can learn about the demise as Aditya Patel clambers free of the car, but big, big disappointment. So Aditya Patel, he just battled his way up into third place out of the race. Dennis Lynn then leads the way, but now Nico Bastian, back up into second, has done the absolute best in the first sector and is fractionally quicker in the second sector as well. So Lynn, look, now starting to come across the traffic out of GT4 going to have to be conscious of just how he attacks this. Does he wait and lose time but play it safe, or does he press on so that he tries to minimise the time lost? Out he comes. Big Lamborghini effort in Blanc GT Series Asia this year. 72 is the new GT4 Mercedes AMG that goes a lap down in the hands of Ringo Chong. Great character. 
Then we've got the Porsche Cayman, the sort of martini livery car of Kio Chong, and then the McLaren ahead. It's not just GT3 that has all the desirable brands, they're there in GT4 as well. The McLaren in the hands of Richard Wee hangs to the inside line, which means that Dennis Lynn has the inside for turn two. Job done. There, Bryce Bosey level with 37, which is Anthony Liu, and it will go through, will he? Yes, and pick up a place as they come over the line. In the background, look, you've also got the Shea Davis Porsche trying to go back ahead of the number eight Ferrari of Nagai, and he does so, outbreaks him going into turn one. So Hiraki Nagai drops back one spot in the ARN Racing run, Ferrari 488. Another great battle, this raging on as they drop down the hill once again. Now, let's try and get to the bottom of what happened to OD Racing. A very frustrated Aditya Patel out of the car, out of the race, but he's with Renai. Yes, David, Aditya, really disappointing, but what happened? Uh, we're not sure yet. We're checking, but uh, I mean, till, till whatever happened, it was going well. So uh, at least we know we've got decent pace to keep up uh, in front again. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we find out what's wrong. Hopefully it's nothing too bad and we can fix it by tomorrow. A difficult start for you guys for the season. What are conditions like out there? Uh, I mean, because it rained a little earlier, the track was uh, a little bit slippery, but it suits the Audi really well, which is, I guess, why I was able to make my way up through these cars. Um, so, yeah, and it, was, it was nothing I can complain about. Really appreciate you talking to us. Back to you, David. Well, I thank So, big disappointment for Aditi Patel. Engine related, we fear, but by the sound of it, with no warning, he just suddenly had the problem. And, uh, well, Try and catch up on this of course the championship website will have all the news post race as well so we are approaching the pit window we're about four minutes off that as dennis lynn powers downhill there 666 is the devilish mercedes leading gt4 russell ward the american driver at the wheel of it you heard on the grid from his co-driver renga reinholt he will do the second stint and that car currently is a long way clear of last year's champions frank you and jean-marc merlin a flash of the lights from the Porsche ahead of this group, 991 is Aidan Reed, who is now up into fifth place. There's the overall race leader down towards turn one. 19, Dennis Lind. Six seconds clear of uh, now Nico Bastian, second spot. They look back for third. Leo Yi a further, six seconds adrift, but it's the uh, fifth place duel that's the one to watch now, really, with the Porsche having all this traffic stacked up behind. But Dennis Lind leading the way. And we are within three minutes of the pit window opening. So two laps, depending on how you want to do this. If it's a pucker pro-am entry, get the am out, put your pro in and maximise it. If you've got two pro drivers, as some of the cars have, then you're looking at perhaps a more even split at the half hour mark. And the pit stop times, 90 seconds for a GT3 car and 125 seconds for GT4. And then tomorrow and onwards for the rest of the season, you start putting in uh, success pit stops if you're in the top three so you accrue extra time for the next race to carry into the race it's not like success ballast it's success time Nico Bastian running in second place pushing on we've now got a couple of three cars being investigated for the safety car procedure the most significant of which in terms of its overall placing is in 14th place. So actually, uh, although they're being investigated, one or two are in GT4, but in GT3 cars, it's one that's in midfield. So it's not going to affect race order terribly much. Have a look at GT4. There's the GT3 leading Lambo. Behind is 666. That is the leading GT4 Mercedes. Russell Wall at the wheel of it. And look, you can beautifully contrast there, GT4 and GT3, because you've got the GT3 Mercedes behind. So it's got a bigger rear wing. It's got a much lower ride height. It's got more grunt. Uh, the GT4 car, in contrast, almost looked road-going, but there, GT4 versus GT3, perfect shot, that, of the two of them overlapping, and you can visibly see the difference between what looks like a thoroughbred race car, the GT3, and the car you can buy for the road, the GT4 Mercedes. But it's taken a while, finally, the manufacturers have cottoned on to how big a market GT4 can be, and now the cars and the manufacturers coming in thick and fast. BMW there, look, with the... Uh, M4, and there you've got the Porsche Cayman, great shape Cayman, just up the road ahead, the sort of bullet-shaped Porsche ahead of the BMW M4 that's, in a sense, a bit touring car-like, but people that have driven them reckon that there's a lot of development work in that car. A lot of money has been spent by BMW on the developments to bring the car up to the spec of the uh, GT3 
GT4 cars that have been around for a season or two longer, and it's got great potential. So we now have the final few seconds ticking down to the pit window opening. There's your race leader, Dennis Lind. So the teams are getting ready and will be on their toes this time around as they await the arrival of cars into the pit lane. One or two teams have been quite busy already, but with unscheduled stops. There is the leader, Lind, powering his way then up to turn 12. And we wait for the four cars which have been lapped to come down towards turn 12 behind so pit window is now open as you see on the graphic Dennis Lind leads the way the Danish driver who apart from having to make sure he's got a good start and a good restart and he has done both things with alacrity he hasn't had too much to worry about in this stint first pit stop just coming by the way 45 hourly down the pit road near to Takeda to give way to Takua Shirasaka not yet at halfway Temperatures are rising again as the sun has burst through. Andrew McPherson's Lamborghini down the pit lane to give way to the uh, very quick Aussie Ben Porter. And Dennis Lind will stay out for at least one more lap before giving the car over to Martin Codery. So through he comes, and that's going to put 11 laps in the book as Dennis Lind howls past the pits. The Lamborghini Huracan, introduced three or four seasons ago. Second place, the Mercedes, in the hands of Nico Bastian. The cap's down by a nap, it's down to 5.9 seconds now. It's a huge margin, second to third as well, because uh, having been running in that leading gaggle early on, Leo Yi has fallen quite a long way adrift. He's 15, nearly 16 seconds away from the leader, and nine seconds, nearly 10 seconds back on Bastian in second place. Next group through, Aidan Reed ahead of Frankie Cheng. And there the pit stops are coming. Bryce Bosey in to give way to Raffaele Marciello, Anthony Liu in to give way to Josh Burden. Also in is. Ferrari 8 of Hiroaki Nagai to give way to Daisuke Ito. Who else have we had in? 063, Hamaguchi to Marco Mapelli. Right, so Raffaele Marciello is there to ready to take over from Bryce Bosi. Raffaele Marciello doing every round bar Thailand this year, which is great news because he's a real asset to the championship. Uh, Bryce Bosi, former Formula Renault Euro Cup racer, but has done a lot of miles of late in the 24 hour series, gets behind wheel for this weekend and uh, he has done his stint and he's now replaced by Raffaele Marciello in the Gripper M Racing Team car. Dennis Lynn leader, how much longer will he stay out for then? Coming now through turn 12 in a moment to drop downhill. There in the pits, more and more drivers come in. Remember it's a longer stop in GT4, 125 seconds and the GT3 team cycling through that little bit faster. Fastest lap of the race, Dennis Lind. And getting busier and busier and busier. There is Lind as we approach the halfway mark. Really, though, now, unless it's a bad pit stop, the opposition needs a safety car to bring them back into the game because it's a big, big lead that the Lamborghini has managed to build up already. There is 999 Nico Bastian. Eduardo Liberati in to correction, other Nissan. Tony Gucci in to give way to Sugio Matsuda. So out goes Marciello, out goes. Burden. Behind him out goes the Lamborghini of Mapelli. So the shuffling all starts, and there is the race leader, Dennis Lind, about to close onto the back of Marco Mapelli, the man with the fastest lap in a road car. Credit to his name, the Lord Schleifer in a Lamborghini Huracan. What else? But it's Marco Mapelli, part of Lamborghini's factory. Late on the brakes there, Nico Bastian clatters the board. Patrick Niederhauser, former GP3 racer, runs around the side ready to get on board. So Patrick Niederhauser to do the second stint. And also in is Frankie Cheng and also in is Shea Davis to give way to Martin Rupp and Sandy Stuvik respectively. And a tyre change, interestingly, on 999 to tune the rears. And do a tyre change in the first stop without any fear of penalty. There you've got Dennis Lynn leading the way, but interesting that the 999 has taken on new boots. So there, also in the pit, Shea Davis giving way in 911 to Sandy Stuvik, who we saw in Lamborghinis last year, but switching brands for this season. Switching teams, of course, to Craft Bamboo Racing. In comes Richard Wees, McLaren to give way to Mott Wen Sun. Also in comes 17 Keo Chang to give way to Masahika Ida. There he is. In the Cayman. Out clambers, Keo Chang, 
And there is the race leading car. Danny Slim, a wheel of it. And is this going to be a pretty equal split? Because he'll get towards the pit in mark at the half hour mark. So is he going to split the race between him and Martin Codrick? Let's see. The lead, of course, slightly grown by dint of Mercedes having already pitted. But it's going to be interesting to see how Niederhauser gets on when the new tyres come in. Lynn for the pit lane. Dennis Lynn in. And Martin Codrich will take over. A good stint, that, as you would expect, really, from the real Lamborghini Meister in Dennis Lynn. Down the pit road he comes. So he's led the race for the entirety of the stint, and he's done the fastest lap of the race. You can't ask for much more than that, can you? In he comes. So Martin Codrich on his toes, getting ready. And here is the leading Lamborghini for the FFF Racing Team by ACM, which has not had a win in Rockman GT Series Asia before. Is this going to be the day? Let's see. Door opens. Dennis Lind, gasping for air, clambers out. His regulation green Lamborghini Natty boots. Can't walk away and have a drink just yet. It's to turn around and strap in the co driver, plug the intercom into the helmet as well. Windscreen cleared, remember, 90 seconds. Pit in to pit out. Which is half a, uh, three quarters of a lap, really. And 666 six, six being expected in as well at Grupper M. We understand the car 17, which is the Keo Chang Porsche, is under investigation for pit lane infringement. There's last year's champion Jean-Marc Merlin leaving the pits. So that car that's taken over now from Frank Yu, is running second in class in the opening stint. There, Martin Codrich gets ready to go. The background is the 666 Mercedes, meeting four leader, and 81 BMW down the pit lane, which is going to now give the car to Sanako took a show. The very smart overalls that the BMW team Studi drivers wear. The Japanese team based at Yokohama. So Takayuki Kinoshita has done the opening stint in that car. Now hands it over. So the race leader, Martin Codrick, downhill. He has now got uh, Brian Lee the road ahead of him as the that marker through he goes and there got their Martin Codrich having taken over from Dennis Lynn's excellent first stint powering his way out of turn four this is turn five speed building all the time ideally drivers want to take this flat but there's always a bit of a psychological lift really uh, and then you're back on the power through turn six, where the exit is slightly off camber, so the car goes light, about 170 kilometres an hour at that point. One arc, third gear, all the way through seven and eight, and then down towards turn nine. It's a first gear corner in the Lamborghini, this. Hard on the brakes, slowest corner on the lap. So there, Martin Codrick climbs the hill, up towards turn 10, up to third gear, hold third all the way around towards turn 11 where it tightens you drop to second as you come down the hill Eduardo Liberati in to give way to former PlayStation gamer Florian Strauss German another driver new to Montpellier GT Series Asia this season the Aston Martin is back out Aston Martin is going out of the shot remember it was delayed early on now GT4 looking a bit more lively lower down there because you've got McLaren and Porsche all running together and we'll catch up on the order in a moment or two because as the pit stop cycle through everything becomes very jumbled indeed the Nissan 23 is dropped down so Florian Strauss should be able to go any moment the Honda there just leaving in the background Philip Mara and Jackie Young's car into the pits again but now for its mandatory stop comes Rick Ewan to give way to Adrian De Silva in the delayed Aston Martin after its puncture at the start so, with last year's overalls on, as an Audi driver, Rick Yoon gets out of the car. Came out of the Audi R8 Cup, in fairness, as well. Number three, Martin Rump, there, ahead of 63, Marco Mappelli, both of whom are rather underrated, Martin Rump especially, the Estonian driver. So, over the timing line goes Raffaele Marciello. Let's see what his lap times are going to be like in 8.88. Marciello, who drove here with champion Hunter Abbott last season but the only event that he did and on his outlap he's just done the absolute best in the last sector so this car could well be in the mix now you've got 25 minutes and change on the clock and it's looking interesting that is for sure 
race order I'll give you at the end of this next lap because we've still got a few stops being completed and cycled through. Number five over the timing line is the Audi that now has Alex Jung at the wheel, the Malaysian hero, former Grand Prix racer, of course. And although it doesn't seem that long ago that he was in junior single-seater racing in the UK, um, his son has started racing in Formula 4 now, which rather dates us all. Fastest lap of the race still claimed by Dennis Lind. And he should still be ahead on the pit stops. As there you see the Nissan. Again, it booms its way up towards turns seven and eight. This is the car that now has Florian Strauss behind the wheel. It led when it pitted with Eduardo Liberati up. 25 minutes of the race to go. GT4, before the pit stops, it was all about number 666 Mercedes with Russell Ward leading the way. And we'll see whether the car has been able to maintain the class lead. It's just gone over the timing line, in fact. But with pit stops, yes, it has gone back into the class lead. So it's maintained the advantage over this car, 81, which is uh, Sonoko Jokoshu being lapped by Martin Kodrich up on the inside line. Lamborghini then GT3 laps BMW GT4. 24 minutes and change on the clock up towards the line. Comes the race leading car then. It is still number 19 that holds sway. And past the pits goes Martin Kodrich. Now where? In all of this is second place, and what is the gap? It's Patrick Niederhauser's Mercedes is there, two cars behind, you'll see the traffic, and then Niederhauser, three and a half seconds is the margin. Now remember, the Mercedes is on new rear tyres. Is that going to help? Let's see. Patrick Niederhauser drops down the hill, Martin Kodrick leading the way, but he might have to dig deep here. Let's see. Pit window is done, pit window is closed. In third place, Nick Foster's Ferrari, fourth is Liberati's Nissan, fifth is March Yellow. Sixth, Josh Burden's Audi. Seventh is Martin Rump's Audi. Eighth is Marco Mappelli's Lamborghini. Ninth is Darrell O'Young's Porsche. Tenth is Andy Stuvik's Porsche. That's the outright in the GT3 order. Leaders turning their way with 23 minutes to go down towards turn seven. And now it's going to be the sector times that are of interest. Is this gap going to come down between the top two? Sector one, we'll see, because the leader has gone through and it's up by 62 thousandths. So Martin Kodrick's just fractionally quicker than Patrick Niederhauser. And might be down to Niederhauser having to get past the traffic because he's just put a lap there on Ben Porter in the Andrew McPherson owned and run and driven Lamborghini. Ben Porter, former Australian Formula V champion and uh, GT racer. Comes downhill. That was the car that had a spin, remember, in Le Patron's hands earlier on. Andrew McPherson only had a spin down at this part of the circuit, in fact. So there, Patrick Niederhauser around the outside of the traffic, picks off the Cayman out of GT4. And now sets off in pursuit of the race leader, the former Formula Abarth champion, Patrick Niederhauser. Sprints up towards turn 15. And there is the Mercedes, the lights flash at the traffic. Sector 1, he'd lost out a little. Sector 2 gained a little, so the pace is looking good. And the new rear tyres, certainly something to factor in. 82 BMW now has got Max Chen at the wheel. Another car to watch in GT4. We'll come to that in a moment, because GT4 is getting ever more competitive as we've now got the Mercedes leading from 11, Tony Fong's Porsche. And 82 is down to fourth in class, scrabbling its way through there against number 17, which is the... Uh, now, Masahiko Ida, BMW, through they come, together. BMW goes ahead then, so 82 back up to now 7th in class, and Ida's Porsche dropping to 8th, and behind them is Josh Burden's GT3 Audi that's going to dive up the inside. Number 17 Porsche, they're still under investigation for a p possible pit lane infringement, but no more news on that has been offered up yet. So the leading gap is 3.3 seconds. At the end of the last lap, the chasing Niederhauser was a fraction faster than the leading Lamborghini. Martin Codrich at the wheel of it, so the gap coming down just a little between the top two. There's the GT4 leader. It is now Renga Reinholt behind the wheel. The car started by Russell Ward, powering his way uphill. Full course yellow, you see the Mercedes suddenly slow, and so we have a second full course yellow. Few think the race leader, thank heavens it wasn't a safety car, but sometimes these do develop into safety car periods. 
And we understand that off the road has gone 69, which is the Aston Martin. Again, it's had a real chequered race. And that looks like at the exit of turn four into turn five, just over the crest, it has come to a halt on the side of the track with Adrian De Silva at the wheel of it. So full course yellow is called for. Car 69 is the stopper. That's why we've got the FC white. And it's a reduced pace now. Everybody has to hold station. So gives us a chance to catch up on the order. Dennis Linder, Martin Codrick, Lamborghini leading. Mercedes second. There it is in the very background of the shot. Uh, Patrick Niederhauser at the wheel. Third is Nick Foster's Ferrari. In fourth place, Florian Strauss with the Nissan. Fifth, Raffaele Marchiello's Mercedes. In sixth place, it's Josh Burden, 37 Audi. Eighth, uh, sorry, seventh, I should say, is number three, Martin Rump's Audi. Eighth, 63 Lamborghini, Marco Mappelli. Ninth is 991 Porsche of Darrello Young. And tenth is 911 Porsche, Sandy Stuvik. In GT4, class lead for 666, Rengar Reinholdt, ahead of uh, the number 11 Porsche of Tony Fong. Third in GT4, Porsche, Jean-Marc Merlin, last year's champion. Fourth in GT4, BMW of uh, Sanako Jokashu. And then fifth is the Gilles Vanillet Ringo Chong Mercedes, which now should have Gilles Vanillet in the wheel. Former European GT3 champion, regular in French GT4 last season. And another of those great characters that's been a mainstay of SRO's portfolio of championships for many, many seasons. So the Aston Martin in its fruit colours of uh, lime and orange and lemon is pushed off the circuit. And as soon as it's out of harm's way, we can go back racing all being well. Of course, the full course yellows can be withdrawn very quickly. doesn't do is allow those that were delayed early on to bunch back up so the gaps remain it means the top two are sitting pretty here because although it's four seconds between them a further 26 back is the third place Ferrari so Martin Codridge almost chugs up the hill oh no so slowly There through is number 19. The race leading Lamborghini, which has really stamped its mark on this race. Pole position, race lead. It's led every live lap, excluding those under the pit stop window, where it made it stop. And it's also done the fastest lap of the race. There's the full course yellow board. As soon as that goes in, we know we're going to go back to racing. And it's almost in. Race director. Radio in hand, will announce any moment. Green flag in short notice. Green flag in short notice means be on your toes. Five, four, Here we go. Three, two, one. Green flag, green flag. We're back racing with 17 minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. There, number five, Alex Yuen goes through 12th place for the Audi. And now let's see who was quicker away. Was it... Niederhauser or was it Codrich? The gap starting this lap was 4.2 seconds. And there, car number 19 leading the race. Up behind the Grupper M GT4 Mercedes, which surely isn't going to get in the way and delay to help the GT3 teammate. No, Ringer Reinhardt lets him go. Downhill they plunge once again. We're on lap number 18. Quarter of an hour remains. They now break hard going into the right at turn 14. Renger Reinhardt goes a little bit wide, and again, you've got this lovely shot of GT3 and GT4 running together. A much bigger wing draped off the back of the GT3 Mercedes powers past. Up towards turn 15, they come. Number 19 is still there leading the way. Then Martin Kodrich comes up towards the timing line. It's been a job very well done so far by the Estonian driver, he comes over the timing line with, in second place, Patrick Niederhauser, and the gap is 1.4 seconds. That time around, much quicker was Niederhauser. Now, does that suggest that it was a rogue lap by the Lamborghini or that the rear tyres, the fresher rear tyres on the Mercedes, are now going to reap dividends? Let's see. 16 minutes and 1.4 seconds between them. It's going to be a lot to ask this now of Codrick to defend if the Mercedes gets right up there. But Gripper M might well have rolled the dice perfectly here by 
taking the opportunity within that mandatory stop time to change the rear tyres. We've had another change lower down. Fourth place, Raphael Marciello has gone ahead of Florian Strauss and also Marco Papelli has got himself up past Martin Rump. So now Codric has got to push. He's got to try and extend this margin, no question about it. Short straight now, they run between turns seven and eight. And we've got a couple of team managers being summoned to race control, both of them out of GT4, Team Saad and Taiwan Top Speed Racing Team. Here are the race leaders, though. 1.4 seconds the margin at the start of the lap, and the gap was down by half a second in the first sector this time. So with slightly fresher rubber, the Mercedes looking better now, looking stronger. And Patrick Niederhauser rumbling on to try and get up onto terms with Codridge. Now, given that the BOP should equate the cars, does it mean that once he's caught him, he'll struggle to get past? Or, given the fresher tyres at the back, once he's caught, he'll just drive past and pull away? Up towards turn 14, second gear corner this, it's a tighter hairpin, possible passing place if you can force the car ahead to run wide, and now this long, fast straight, up to sixth gear, 235, 240 kilometres in the Lamborghini before you arrive at the hairpin, and then it's down to first gear. Into the hairpin they come, you brake earlier as your stint goes on here, as the brakes start to get a bit more tired. So as they come out of the hairpin, over the timing line, it remains the Lamborghini ahead. Those team managers I was mentioning are being summoned because the pit stops were too short. They were under the regulation time, so they've got to go and account for themselves and then potentially serve a penalty. The leaders are separated by half a second and 14 minutes on the clock. Out of turn one, then they come. First gear corner. Grab second, plunge downhill. Hard to overtake here unless somebody runs wide or it's the opening lap of the race and you can really force the issue and get your elbows out. Codrich leads Niederhauser. Long climb up the hill of the Mercedes, has the grunt out of the corner. 220 kilometres an hour, hard on the brakes, heavy braking zone. Second gear through turn four. Codrich then, certainly under attack, certainly under pressure, but doing absolutely the right thing here, keeping at bay the Mercedes as they thread their way out of turn five into turn six pair of them, absolutely as one now, Codrich certainly feeling the pressure, using all of the road and then some, running out wide out of turn six and seven, bounce over the curb then, through turn eight they come, and now the run towards the first gear, left hand hairpin at turn nine. Over the brow they will come, 13 minutes on the clock. Can Codrich make the Lamborghini that wide for that long? Drop downhill now. Hard on the brakes. Patrick Niederhauser, is there a gap on the inside? There's not, but he closes right up onto the tail of Martin Codrich, showing intent now, and trying to make the mistake come and give notice to Codrich that he's quicker. The rear tyres with a bit more grit. He's sitting in the wheel tracks, does he make a move on the inside into turn 15? He thinks about it, goes one way, then the other. Codrich defends, but is it inevitable that the Mercedes is going to go through? It'll be interesting now on the drive out of the corner if it can get the traction down better. Let's see. Powering its way up past the pits. The Mercedes now looks like it's got the advantage. This car, remember, that started third on the grid, now in the wheel tracks of the pole car. Past the pits they go, Codrich has no option but to defend the inside line. Can Niederhauser go wide in and tight out? That's the plan, that's the move, that's the lead. Through he goes, Patrick Niederhauser gets his nose in front for turn two, but he's on the outside line, and Codrich comes back at him. Codrich retakes the advantage. Then on the outside line was, Bast it was uh, Niederhauser. He tries to cut across to the inside, but he can't do it. Codrich has to go defensive everywhere here. Again, look, he covers off the inside line. Niederhauser given no option but to go the long way around on the outside. And he ducks up the inside and he'll get the drive out of the corner and he will go through, will he? But he'll be on the outside for turn five. That translates to the inside at turn six. This is great stuff. Codrich just with the inside. Has he got his nose back in front? He has. Fantastic stuff. 11 minutes to go and the Lamborghini somehow hangs on to the race lead. Brilliant racing between the two of them. Through turn seven and eight they go and it's still somehow the Lamborghini staying ahead. Hard on the brakes, first gear now for turn nine. And again, traction counts here, slow corner up the hill. So the Mercedes could be in the box seat for the next section. 
but where's your next overtaking opportunity? It's really down at turn 14 by which stage out of this set here corner now at turn 11. The Lamborghini should have been able to get back up to a proper pace. It's the stop start corners, I suspect, that will hurt the Lamborghini. It's got the traction, but when it's in a nice flowing rhythm, it's okay. Out of turn 14, they come hard on the brakes. Does the Lamborghini go wide? Does a little bit, but still able to move across and cover that line. So a flying lap is over two minutes, and we've got ten minutes still to run. This is still a long afternoon for Codrich. It's a nervous afternoon for the FFF racing team, which has not had a win in Blanc Pan GT Series Asia before. Group M, remember, the team that had lots of success last year with Hunter Abbott, and whether it was Maxi Buch or Maxi Gutz or Raffaele Marchiello, great results across the whole season. Over the timing line they come. So three tenths of a second being the margin between the two as they drop down towards turn one, hard on the brakes. Can Niederhauser find a way out the inside? He can, he's got the drive, but again he's on the wrong line and he's not going to be able to get around the outside there. Codric breathed another sigh of relief, he's just got the car back into the lead, he's up the kerb. But then as he runs out wide, will that leave the door open for Niederhauser? There is a rather nervous looking Dennis Lind. Remember he had that big advantage early on. But the Mercedes with the better tyres now is absolutely hacking away at it all over the back of the Lamborghini. Nine minutes to go. And again, just as we saw on the previous lap, inside line, out of turn four, outside for five. Doesn't level this time. Niederhauser slots back in behind him. It's still the Lamborghini ahead, but only just nose to tail. Lamborghini versus Mercedes. The opening round of Blanc Pan GT Series Asia. And what a lead battle. And what a contrast from the first stint because Dennis Lynn was away and gone and now his co-driver Martin Codridge having the fight of his life to try to hang on to this maiden win. Down to first, turn left, climb the hill. Codridge has to keep that car ahead for eight and a half more minutes. Sounds easy but it's far from it. The pressure in these temperatures is remorseless. Patrick Niederhauser. Not yet, if you like, having made his name as a GT racer. He was good in single-seaters, made that move into the Lamborghini Super Trofeo two seasons ago. Drove last year in the ADAC German GT Masters Championship. But now in Rockpan GT Series, Asia has a point to prove, and he wants a win here. So you've got the Estonian driver just at the moment, keeping Swiss Patrick Niederhauser behind him. Up towards turn 15 they come. Do we see the Mercedes dive out at the last? We do! But he's not going to commit. Slots back in. Away through turn 15 goes the Lamborghini, hugging the apex, hugging the inside line is Martin Codrich. FFF Racing Team can barely watch because, if you like, in a sense, every lap the car's ahead is prolonging the agony because even they must feel the Mercedes now looks a little bit stronger. Down towards turn one again. This is where Niederhauser has been able to make a move in the past to try and unsettle the Lamborghini. Codrich, though, thus far is doing a grand job and this time he's got the inside line well and truly covered the door is closed and it's locked and bolted and the key thrown away downhill they come nose to tail seven minutes and change now remaining if Codrich can hang on it will be the drive of his life uphill they go inside line at turn four this time looked for by Niederhauser can't do it can he get the drive out of the corner as he has on previous laps this time no in fairness so Martin Codrich, still the race leader. We drop into the six minutes and change bracket now towards turn six. Now behind them, it is Nick Foster's Ferrari, which is hunting them down and is lapping quicker. There to the outside goes Niederhauser. Can he go all the way around the outside at turn seven? He can, they touch, the Lambo gets sideways, but Niederhauser leads the way. Finally, he's done it. Round the outside goes Patrick Niederhauser. It was brave, it was bold, and it worked. Lots of applause at Gripper M. And there'll be disappointed faces, no doubt, at FFF Racing Team. So, Patrick Niederhauser is now the leader. There'll be some head scratching, I would have thought, within FFF as to where that big lead all went to. But with those new rear tyres that we saw being put onto the Mercedes, it's working well now for Niederhauser. He leads with six minutes to go. Codrich gave it his best shot, but Patrick Niederhauser now leads the field. Downhill he comes. A very impressive drive. The Swiss driver it is then who comes through turn 14 ahead. And can he hang on in there? It's got to be error free. It was a great defence by Codrich, but in the end, it was a very opportunistic move at an unusual place by Niederhauser that perhaps caught Codrich off the guard just a little. And we'll have another look at it in a moment because you don't normally go and make a move at turn seven, and certainly not around the outside. 
It worked very nicely indeed for Patrick Niederhauser as they come up towards the line at the end now of that 23. So here it is, nose to tail, coming out of six. Kodrich covers the line and then suddenly realises that he's left the door open on the outside. But that's all right, it's the outside line. You don't challenge there, do you? Do you? You do. And Niederhauser round the outside. There's a brush between the two. But at that point, Niederhauser was committed and he was coming past. So Patrick Niederhauser leads the way, heads downhill. And despite that brush, doesn't seem to have done either of them any harm. The gap then was 1.4 seconds. A straight away, the Mercedes pulling clear. Contact between those two cars is under investigation. That little rub between them is being looked at, but I've got to say, I don't think there's anything sinister. That's just two hard racers racing hard. And now Patrick Niederhauser getting away up front. Dennis Lynn still has the fastest lap of the race to his credit, but that's no consolation now because he wanted a win. There, Craft Bamboo Racing's twin Porsches have got themselves together. They are quite a long way down all of a sudden, 10th and 11th. Sandy Stuthick ahead of Darrell O'Young. What else have we got going on? This is the battle for seventh. Marco Mappelli ahead of Martin Rump in the Audi. Martin Rump there closing up a little bit under braking at turn four. Four and a half minutes on the clock. And in GT4, by the way, class still being led by the Mercedes. Renga Reinhold at the wheel as through the traffic goes this battle between Mappelli and Rump. And wide goes Mappelli coming out the other side, having just put a lap on Tony Fond. Porsche came in the uh, GT4 Club Sport. Very wide, really hustling on now is Mapelli, chasing after Josh Burden in Anthony Lou's car. That's your GT4 leader. It almost looks like a safety car's come out because it's limited on livery and it's so standard in comparison with the GT3 Mercedes you get used to seeing, but that is the GT4 class leader. Renger Reinhold having taken over from Russell Ward behind that car, behind that car's wheel. Um, it is now ahead of Jean-Marc Merlin's Porsche by 27 seconds. A big, big lead in the class, that. So three and a half minutes still to run. Down through turn seven and eight goes the Mercedes now. this by the Gripper M team, one of the AMG customer teams, and accelerates uphill, as there is the frustrated Martin Kodrich then down in second spot, and falling away from the race leader. His only hope is that Niederhauser now gets tripped up by the traffic, but Patrick Niederhauser having worked so hard to get that car into the equation, because it wasn't even in the top three early on in the race, he's surely now not going to put himself in jeopardy. There through is Kodrich dropping away. Is he going to get caught by anybody? Let's just see, because although his last lap was a two minute six, he's got enough in hand over the quicker Nick Foster Ferrari behind him. But interesting as to why the Lamborghini pace is going away. Is it the car? Is it the tyre? Is it the driver? Race leader into the traffic now, about to put a lap on 45. Takuyuka Shirasaka. Turns his way uphill through that long right hander. Is in third gear, down to second here for the slightly tighter turn 11. And then the run downhill once more, speed building at this point through the fast turn 12. Fourth gear as you arrive into turn 13 here. And then slow the car down to second for the tighter part of the corner. And climb uphill a little bit at this point as well. And sideways there, Niederhauser has carried a bit of speed into the corner. So we are going to start the last lap this time. There is less than a lap time left in the race. And as they sprint up towards turn 15, Patrick Niederhauser leading the way after a good opening effort by Nico Bastian. They'll both be first-time winners in Blanc Pan GT Series Asia. And another excellent race in this championship's short history. Over the timing line goes the leading Mercedes, and the gap is now 3.6 seconds. So Patrick Niederhauser leading the way, and barring a big drama on this last lap, he's home and dry, I would have thought now, because the car has run faultlessly, he has been error-free, and he's got the pace, and he's got the freshness of the tyres to be able to maintain this advantage now to the end. One more minute on the clock, as uphill climbs the Mercedes. And there you've got Gripper M trying to get the formation finish here, because just to make the point, it's a Gripper M car leading in GT3 and in GT4. Now, 
where is the 666 Mercedes in relation? It's a little bit further up the road, I think, but it's going to be a great day for Grupper M. This team reformed over the winter of 2016 into 2017 for last year's championship. A lot of hard work by uh, British racer Tim Sugden, amongst others, to put it all together. We saw Tim in the championship last season, but Grupper M now taking on a slightly enlarged project, two GT3 cars and a GT4 Mercedes, and with a class win beckoning in both, what a start to the season. The stewards have had a look at the brush between Niederhauser and Kodrich, no further action warranted, which you can understand, and the chequered flag will fly shortly at the end of round one of Blockman GT Series Asia, but the party at Grupper M is going to be quite riotous, I would have thought, if it can get two class wins out of one race. Niederhauser puts a lap on number 72 Mercedes. That's the Team I race Doc win car. Gilles Vanillet at the wheel. There's the GT4 Mercedes. Yeah, they're not going to get them together for the photographs, but they are going to have two class wins. The GT4 Mercedes goes through. Well clear of Jean-Marc Merlin, whose Porsche there is number 77. That will be a lap down again against the leading car overall because Patrick Niederhauser goes through, puts a lap on the reigning GT4 champion and comes now into turn 15. As the run to the line for the car started by Nico Bastian. Patrick Niederhauser and Nico Bastian will win the opening round of Blancpain GT Series Asia for 2018. The Mercedes run by Gripper M Racing Team wins here at Sepang. It's a very happy team indeed. A GT3 win and a GT4 win is around the corner as well. So, as the chequered flag waves, second to a frustrated Martin Codrich and Dennis Lind. Third, for Gripper M, by the way, uh, Bryce Bosey and Raffaele Marchiello. So, first and third, and a class win. How about that? Fourth, dropping away at the end, Nick Foster. Fifth will be with Leo Yi. Fifth will be Florian Strauss and Eduardo Liberati. Sixth, Anthony Liu and Josh Burden. Seventh will be the second Lamborghini in the hands of uh, Hiroshi Hamaguchi and Marco Vapelli ahead of Martin Rumpel and Frankie Cheng. Ninth, Daisuke Aito and Hiroaki Nagai. And tenth will be Shea Davis and Sandy Stuvik. And to win GT4, the first GT4 win in Blancpain GT Series Asia for Mercedes. Here it is. This is the car of Russell Ward, the American, and Renger Reinholdt, his uh, German teammate, co-driver. That car heading now into turn 12, the bottom of the hill. And an excellent drive by both parties. Russell Ward started, Renger Reinhardt will bring it home. And as they come now up through the right-hander, out of turn 14 from second gear, up through the box, up towards the top as you approach the hairpin. The celebrations are already starting at Group Around, but they've got one more car to cheer home yet. It's just the confidence in life you see now. But with everybody else in GT4 having taken the flag, we just wait for 666, and here, Category win will go the way of Russell Ward and Renger Reinholdt to add to this wonderful day for Gripper M. So as it comes across the timing line, Renger Reinholdt with Russell Ward wins GT4 in the opening race in Blancpain GT Series Asia for 2018. There's a flash of the lights. Tomorrow you factor in the extra time in the pit stops for the uh, success penalties. And that perhaps might just affect the results a little, but what a race and what a battle that was for the race lead. And Martin Codrich, yes, will feel frustrated, but it was a great drive that he had put in to try and defend for as long as he could. Raffaele Marchiello marched up the order in the end to finish third. He was only 12 seconds away from the leader. He was absolutely flying while we were watching what was going on for the lead. He just got on with life, carved his way into contention. And as there, down to pit lane comes the winning Mercedes. We'll have the drivers shortly for the uh, podiums. So that'll be the GT3, Pro-Am, the Silver, and GT4 as well. So, great drive by Patrick Niederhauser. There, out of the car. You will get. Already there is uh, Nico Bastian. Bryce Bosey and Raffaele Marchiello, incidentally, just to confirm they are the Pro-Am winners in third place overall. Second of the Pro-Ams, Anthony Liu and Josh Bird. Third of the Pro-Ams, Mabucci and Mapelli.
So Patrick Niederhauser and Nico Bastian, the race winners, ahead of Martin Kodrich and Dennis Lynn, and Raffaele Marciello and Bryce Bosey third, ahead of Mick Foster and Leo Yi. Florian Strauss and Eduardo Liberati fifth and sixth, Josh Byrne and Anthony Liu. Right, let's hear from our victorious winning Mercedes drivers, Renai is on the spot. She was just run off. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, a beautiful start into the season. Um, it's it's just a just a perfect start for sure with P1. Uh, we were third in qualifying, but I uh, could overtake uh, the Ferrari quite quite fast. Then I had to overtake him a second time, which I really don't like when I have to overtake cars a uh, second time. But uh, yeah, at the end, Patrick did a mega job. We could save tires a little bit in free practice sessions. That's why we had a new tire set now. And yeah, it paid off. Yeah, so uh, Patrick, actually, it's his very first race in the Mercedes AMG and then straight away a win. Huh? For him, it's also great. Huh? Congratulations then, Patrick. Are you ready? Sorry, I didn't understand you. Oh, oh. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a, a tough race already from the start. Uh, Nico did a really great job. I think uh, we're a bit unlucky there with the full course yellow, but uh, he always took him back and um, then, yeah, took the car in P2. At quite a gap to uh, too close but um, yeah our car was maybe not as quick as the Audis in qualifying but uh, we had a really really good race pace so uh, yeah I was able to to catch him up uh, with a great strategy then uh, the overtaking was harder than I thought but um, yeah we had a little touch but I think that's uh, GT racing so uh, I'm really happy was there a little bit of a touch yeah he touched me twice but uh, obviously you know we were fighting door by door uh, he was on the inside so uh, yeah, almost spun, but I took the risk there as he made a mistake. So, uh, yeah, really happy. Incredible racing to watch. Congratulations. Enjoy that. Back to you, David. <laughs> Renai, thanks. Very happy drivers. Then Nico Bastien, Patrick Niederhauser. What a debut in Blancpain GT Series Asia as well. I suspect the mood of Martin Kodrich and Dennis Lind will be a little bit more muted in comparison because they came so close to a win. In the end, four seconds was the margin, but really the relentless pace of the Mercedes with the fresher rear tyres that they took on at the pit stop. That was always going to uh, play against them, but Martin Kodrich did a ripper job of hanging on for as long as he could. And uh, we also have, as I was mentioning a moment ago, third. So more success for Grupper M, not only third overall for the other GT3 car, but they win Pro-Am, Bryce Bosi and Raffaele Marciello. So the drivers will be rounded up for the podium shortly. But let's hear from Martin Kodrich and Dennis Lind, second. So near and yet so far, Renai. Congratulations, still on the podium. I know you probably wanted a bit more out of that. Yeah, I think we uh, we got beat a bit by Merck that they were just on the right strategy. We were gambling a bit on tyres and yeah, it just seemed like they were a bit more clever than us. Martin did what he could to hold them off. He did a really good job. Uh, not much you can do against French tyres in my opinion. Some tough moves from you in that final few laps. But yeah, I mean, uh, it was a really tough race. Uh, Dennis did everything he could. He did a fantastic job, pulled away. Um, we thought we had it really. Um, but yeah, Merck just was too fast for us today. I think I did everything to I could to defend him, but yeah, it, I couldn't do any more. He, he put a really good move around the outside in um, T7, and uh, yeah, that was it. Uh, we settled for second. How much did that move hurt? How much did? How much did that move hurt? Well, it hurt a bit, um, definitely, because I held him off for a couple of laps, and I I was sort of encouraging myself, come on, let's do it. We can do it for the last 10 minutes. But um, yeah, it did hurt because um, yeah. I, I thought I had him, but yeah, they were just too fast today. We've got one more race this weekend, so look forward to that one. Back to you, David. A great job done by Dennis Lind and Martin Kodrich. And then third, Bryce Bosi, another newcomer to Blancpain GT Series Asia. And Raffaele Marciello, adding to the joy for the Grupper M racing team for a win, a third, Pro-Am honours, GT4 honours. Astonishing result for the British-Chinese team. So, as the cars in Park Ferme, we'll go through scrutineering. The drivers in question, and we've got many, many of them, required for the podiums, where we have an overall, a Pro-Am, an Am, and a GT4. They will uh, all make their way up the stairs, ready for the podium ceremony, and we'll be there in a moment as well. So we'll have a look at the best bits of race one, and there were lots of good bits in a moment. As you see at the foot of the pit lane, cars, more delectable GT machinery, uh, making its way onto the circuit.
so for the opening race of Blancpain GT Series Asia, Patrick Niederhauser and Nico Bastian, the winners from Martin Kodrich and Dennis Lind, Bryce Bosey and Raffaele Marchiello for third. As I say, we'll go to the podium uh, in a few moments' time. The drivers will be introduced and four raucous podiums, no doubt, will ensue. The teams, I can see, gathering at the foot of the podium. Tomorrow's race, with a separate grid, of course, based on a second qualifying session, will get underway at 10 minutes to 12 local time. And with Australian driver Josh Burden starting on pole position for that, another intriguing grid promises to be another good race to uh, look forward to tomorrow right so the podium is coming up drivers have all I think been assembled by the SRO motorsports group team that does such a stellar job of organizing Blancpain GT Series Asia and the drivers will be brought forward very shortly the overall podium that we have plus Pro-Am plus Am and GT4 and we'll be getting underway with the podiums very shortly Matteo Braga from Pirelli standing by to do the honours for the first podium at least. Grupper M celebrating the moment, understandably. And there is the podium as we are ready for the podium. It's a win for Patrick Niederhauser and Nico Bastien in round one of Blancpain GT Series Asia. Let's join Renai on the podium. Drivers on the podium, call forward, third place, Bryce Bosey, Raffaele Marchiello, second, Martin Kodrich and Dennis Lind, and then the winners in a moment. There they are, Patrick Niederhauser and Nico Bastien. Matteo Braga, the circuit activities manager from Pirelli Tyres, steps forward, hands over the trophies to Bryce Bosey and Raffaele Marchiello, newcomer Bryce Bosey to this championship, but uh, ex-Formula Renault racer, pretty experienced in this type of racing, by dint of being in the 24-hour series for a number of uh, races in the last couple of years. Dennis Lind, the bearded Dane, and Martin Kodrich, the Estonian, with him. And then the race winners on that top step. First time out, first win, Patrick Niederhauser and Nico Bastian. Nico, part of the Mercedes AMG programme. Patrick Niederhauser, new to Mercedes, having been a Lamborghini driver. And Benjamin Franasevici, the championship manager, steps forward to hand over the checks to the season-long entrance in the championship. The third, two and a half thousand dollars, five thousand second. And it is going to be for the winners, ten thousand, which should buy quite a lot of beer to celebrate with the team tonight, for sure. So Patrick Niederhauser and Nico Vassian win this opening race of Blancpain GT Series Asia and they do so in style now the champagne to be sprayed and seeing they are desperate to cool down it's no surprise that just about everybody gets a soaking so the overall GT3 podium A job well done by Patrick Niederhauser. The way that he fought back into contention, mightily impressive. Patrick Niederhauser and Nico Bastien, winners of round one of Blancpain GT Series Asia. So now the podium will be made ready for the GT3 Pro-Am drivers. Now the pit lane come the cars for Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia, which is the next race. 
But we concentrate for the moment on the celebrations, the podium ceremony, which will be taking place in a moment for the top three crews from uh, Pro-Am. Out comes Hiroshi Hamaguchi and Marco Mapelli. Then for second place, Anthony Liu and Josh Burden. And then Bryce Bosey and Raffaele Marciello, class winners. So for the Mercedes team of Gripper M, an excellent job done. Bryce Bosey and Raffaele Marciello just left the podium overall and back on it as Pro-Am winners. And it will be Tansri Azman Yaya, the chairman of Sepang International Circuit, who should be the man doing the honours with the trophies, which are presented shortly. That is the trophy for these drivers here, sir. So the trophy girls. So for third place goes the way of Hiroshi Hamaguchi and Marco Mapelli. For second spot, Trophies now to Anthony Liu and Josh Burden. Carl pole position tomorrow thanks to the time of Josh Burden. So one to watch. And they're the winners, Bryce Bosi and Raffaele Marciello. There is also the Blanc Pan clock to be presented to the AM of Pro Am winning team. And that means that Bryce Bosi gets the clock. Raffaele Marciello gets a handshake. So now the drivers are complete with the photographs and it means that if they are of a mind to... Oh, where's all my fun gone, thinks Bryce Posey, as the champagne. Well, the only other person that was remotely interested was Hiroshi Hamaguchi, but is he going to play alone, so to speak. He may as well. <laughs> Hiroshi Hamaguchi with Marco Mapelli third, but everybody else is scarpered. So the Pro-Ams make their way off the podium. And next will be the Am category, where Philip Mar and Jackie Young third in the Honda. Lamborghini second, Andrew McPherson and uh, Ben Porter. And then we have the Audi as the winning car of Mayota, Takeda and Takuya Shirasaka. Drivers will be out shortly for the presentations. And Philip Ma and Jackie Yun take a podium first time out in the Honda, the NSX GT3. Andrew McPherson and Ben Porter for second place, the first Australian team into the championship. We've seen Australian drivers before, but AMAC, Andrew McPherson's squad, very welcome addition to the grid with the Lamborghini. And second place it is to Andrew McPherson, who tries to get himself on the top step. But Naota Takeda and Takuya Shirasaka are the class winners in GT3 AM, and they will make their way to the top step of the podium. Naoto Takeda and Takuya Shirasaka, the GT3 AM winners. And now Morgan Benoit from International Action Star representing iRace.win steps forward with the trophies to the Honda drivers for third place. For second, it will be the other end of the podium, Andrew McPherson and Ben Porter. And the top step goes the way of the Audi drivers, Naota Takeda and Takuya Shirosaka. Lots of applause for the winning drivers. And the trophy is presented. Now we'll find out whether they are gentlemanly ams or not. Or whether they are about to let loose with the champagne. And let's see what the plan is. Photographers do the necessary and say, look over there, a wave from Naota Takeda, and thumbs up all round, big smiles, and job done. And now the champagne is about to fly. 
We've got one more podium to come, and that will be for the GT4 drivers. So as the GT3 AMs celebrate, Yota Takeda has still not really got going with the champagne here. He's on a different strategy, clearly. Like saving it. So for Honda, a good result. The NSX, a new car into GT3 racing, more development to come. And Yota Takeda and co-driver Takuya Shirasaka celebrate a class win. But while all that was going on in GT3, GT4 added to the joy as far as Grupa M was concerned as a team because it was another class win to go to the overall and third and pro-am success of the day. And so the drivers shortly will step forward from the GT4 category, namely Russell Ward and Reinhold Renger. So as Ringo Chong and Gilles Vanillet make their way forward. Uh, for second place, the defending champions, Jean-Marc Merlin and Frank Yu. And then Renga Reinhardt and Russell Ward as the winning drivers make their way up onto the podium. And what a day it has been for Gripper M with a GT4, a GT3 win, third overall as well, and Pro-Am honours in GT3. Matteo Braga. The circuit activities manager from Pirelli steps forward with the trophies and I expect another riotous press conference, as ever is the case when Ringo Chong is in town. Very, very happy with that win, especially as it's a new co-driver and a new team and a new car for him as well. So he makes his way up to third on the podium. Second trophy is already given to the reigning champions of uh, Jean-Marc Merlin and Frank Yu, and then the class winners, Russell Ward, and Renger Reinholt are up next. And then for the permanent championship entries, the checks are presented. $1,500 if you're third, $2,500 if you're second. Benjamin Franasevic, the championship manager, doing the honours. And then to the winners, the biggest check of all for 3500 goes for Russell Ward and uh, Renger Reinholt. is now huddled together with trophies and soon as everyone is happy and the drivers can be released to the press conference and the celebrations at the end of round one of Blanc Pant GT Series Asia. A tremendous effort for Mercedes as a brand with a dominant display both a win in GT3 and in GT4 as well. And the champagne sprayed by a very happy Ringo Reinhardt and he and Russell Ward victorious. John Mark Merlin and Frank Yu for second. And Ringo Chong and the championship newcomer Gilles Vanillet, former European GT3 champion, was in the French GT4 series last year and was added to the air miles by dedicating his efforts to this series for 2018. So let's have a look at the highlights then of round one of Blanc Pan GT Series Asia, a race interrupted by safety cars and full course yellows, but with some great racing along the way. When the race got underway, lights went green at the last moment, and perhaps that caught off guard one or two at the very front of the grid, and it meant there was a real bottleneck on the run down towards turn one. But from pole position, Dennis Lind was the man hanging on to the advantage. Around the outside, tried to go Leo Yi, but to no avail. The Ferrari got run out wide, and so Lind it was who led. But a good effort by Nico Bastian put him up on the outside line at turn two. As the Lamborghini escaped, it was Bastian then who was left to hang on to second spot. Battles raged on behind it as Aditya to Patel managed to get third. The Audi of last year's championship runners up was looking good. It was not to last though, because it wasn't long before the car limped into the pit lane. We had cars in strife early on, a spinning Andrew McPherson. The damaged Aston Martin had been in and out of the pit lane. And when the pit window arrived, so with a flourish did Nico Bastian. Patrick Niederhauser was installed in the car, and with new rear tyres, it had so much better traction and so much more pace than the leader, the gap started to crumble. In GT4, BMW 
trying to work its way up the order, but way out in front was the GT4 Mercedes in the hands of Russell Ward and Ranga Reinhold because that car was pulling further and further away. And on borrowed time, the leading Lamborghini of FFF Racing Team, it wasn't long before Niederhauser was crawling all over the back of Martin Kodrich. And however wide he tried to make the car, it always looked inevitable that the Mercedes would find a way through. And it came round the outside, going from turn seven to turn eight. They touched, they both got a bit sideways, but the Mercedes was coming through and it was all smiles at Grupperan. Through the traffic came Niederhauser, a mighty display to win round one Blancpain GT Series Asia. So, round one completed. Race two tomorrow has got a lot to live up to. We look forward to your company for race two of Blancpain GT Series Asia. For now, from Renai Matu and David Addison, bye-bye from Sepang. The opening round of Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia here at Sepang. Welcome to round one, 50 minutes of racing, and we are already on the green flag lap as the cars are released. New cars for this year. It's the Huracan Super Trofeo Evo with its very distinctive Formula One style rear bodywork. The car uh, unveiled last year at the World Finals at Imola, and this year's championship promises to be an absolute stormer. The entry is a very strong one. You've got some new drivers, some returning drivers few combinations mixed up as well and pole position taken for this race by number 63 Artyo Janos who will share with Andrea Amici a former European champion Artyo Janos came into Lamborghini racing last season and shared on more occasions than not with Toby Sauri who is racing Lamborghinis now this weekend in fact in the International GT Open Series so a very strong combination the Polish driver Artyo Janos and Andrea Amici but alongside the Middle East champion Jack Bartholomew who shares with the runner-up in the Middle East Championship, James Paul. It will be James Paul that starts. And of course, the races have mandatory pit stops just to make the points. They are all the same car, but we have different classes based on the ability and experience and success of drivers. So we've got Pro, Pro Am, Am, and the Lamborghini Cup for the real gentleman races. It's a 50 minute race, pit window between 20 and 30. If you're on your own, there aren't that many soloists these days, only a couple. And if you're on your own, you have to make a pit stop of 63 seconds and pit in to pit out is 88. If you are a two driver entry, then 60 seconds and 85 line to line is the time. Why is it different? Well, if you're on your own, you're deemed to have an advantage because you know what the track conditions are like and you can be up to speed that little bit quicker when you return to the circuit, unlike the fresh driver into a two driver entry. So just to try and balance things, and it's not just in this, it's in all the Lamborghini Super Trofeos, then you have that difference in the pit stop times. Up front then for FFF Racing Team, the two Roger Dubois backed cars coming up towards turn 14. Archer Janos in the pole car, James Paul alongside. Then on the second row of the grid it's going to be Arman Ebrahim, the Indian driver and Takeshi Matsumoto lining up alongside for the Hujas Racing Team. On the third row, Richard Muscat, who made his name in Porsches, but now uh, in addition to his efforts in the uh, Super 2 Series in Australian supercars comes to Lamborghinis and he will alongside the Leipzig car have the uh, Gamma Racing entry of Evan Chen so the field starts to form up into this 2x2 Noah's Ark formation heading now up towards turn 15 and we are set to go racing then for the opening round of Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia uh, one of the four regional championships there's the Middle East Series which runs in the early part of the year that's already been won by Jack Bartholomew you've got Europe, North America plus Asia, 
and then they go head to head in the world finals at Vallelonga in November. Through the turn 15 left hander, they will come up towards the timing line. Assuming the race director is happy with everyone's position, he will put the lights to green and we will go racing. And James Pull from the outside of the front row of the grid, a little bit behind as the lights go to green and a good start made by Richard Muscat in the Wilson security car that dives to the inside line. He's up and past Amad Abraham already as they dive down towards turn one. Richard Muscat then can try and outbreak as many as he dares, but the leader is going to be Artur Janos as they dive into turn one and almost three wide for second place. James Pull is the one that gets that rather elbowed out wide. And Richard Muscat from the third row up into second place. A great start, that. Downhill they come for the first time of asking then. Where did James Poole fall to in all of that? He's down in fourth, possibly even lower. But the leader is Artur Janos then, trying to build the advantage early on as they climb uphill. Muscat runs second. And James Poole on the outside line has fallen back in the pack. Amar Abraham likewise, but the best start of all, you could argue. Richard Muscat away like a stab rat from that, wasn't he? Up the inside line, charged past the traffic. And as they come now through turn five on this opening lap, look at the way the top two just edging away slightly. Fifth is where you find Poole in the second of the FFF Racing Team cars. You've got, therefore, Matsumoto and also Ebrahim running in third and fourth places through turns seven and eight for the first time. Archer Janos now trying to edge away. Richard Muscat going after him in the car that he shares with Ben Gosakowski, the Leipert Motorsport car, one of the more experienced Lamborghini teams, Leipert Motorsport. And as they come through turn nine, and then the uphill climb here through turn ten, the top two edging away. In fourth place, it is Takeshi Matsumoto then, heading the Pro-Am category at the moment as the cars accelerate downhill for the first time. It's a long lap, five and a half kilometres, 15 corners long this lap as well. And some very intriguing liveries, including there you see Pravakan Kumar in the number 98 Ilezzo Motorsport car running near the back of the pack. He's one of the Pro-Am drivers sharing with the Monegasque Cedric Sparazzo early. As the leaders then accelerate not over the line, this is the penultimate straight up towards turn 15, but it's a support race start area and pit lane area. So the leading car, that of Artur Janos it is, leading the pack as they come now up towards the left-hander at turn 15. Past the pits they come, so it is Artur Janos in the lead. Behind him, Muscat runs second. Third is Aman Ebrahim. In fourth is Matsumoto. James Pool fifth. Sarun Zirafaranakul is in sixth. Ahead of Evan Chen. Mikko Eskelen is seventh. Andrew Harianto in eighth. Uh, sorry, he's uh, in ninth place. And then tenth at the moment, number 69, which is Han Hoi Lin in the top speed racing team car. Race leaders then turning their way up towards turn four on this second lap of the race. And now, as the leader gets away, so the gap is coming down between second and third. Let's see whether that's going to change on this lap and whether or not the race leader can escape even further as the battle rages on behind. Point two seconds was the margin at the end of the opening lap between the top two. And now look, Richard Mascat, despite that good start, is falling away slightly into the clutches of Armand Ebrahim. Down they come towards turn nine. Hard on the brakes. And then uphill. 57 there you can see is Saran Sirafaranakul. And he has got Evan Chen tucked up behind him. Uh, Sirifaranakul runs in AM. He's the class leader. Evan Chen's at a pro AM. So a good little scrap developing there. And it's interesting as well. You take the pace of different drivers out of the different classes. Up front, though, Artur Janos getting away. Janos, former uh, GP3 racer before he came into Lamborghini's last season. And going great guns here as he comes now up through the right-hander of turn 14. Pace quickening now on the run up towards the turn 15 hairpin. He's raced in Ferraris in the past as well in GT racing, but it's in Lamborghini's of late that he's really concentrated and he's made his name. Richard Mascat's second spot. Wilson security car comes out of turn 15. Now James Poole from second on the grid has got a bit of work to do here to get back into the mix, hasn't he? There over the line goes the leader, Muscat second, third is Amar Ebrahim, fourth in the green car in the background is Matsumoto, James Poole fifth, and then sixth and seventh together across the line. Uh, Saron Sirifaranakul is just ahead of Evan Chen, then Andrew Harianto, the soloist, who's just got himself up past Mikko Eskelen and the Finn, racer and rally driver down to ninth. So there, 38, Matsumoto. Closing back up now onto the tail of Ebrahim. He's taking James Poole with him. 
James born in Malaysia and a kind of home round therefore in this championship as he comes now hill towards turn four but Artyo Janos escaping up the road up front looking very strong indeed at the moment here they turn and there hard on the brakes is Evan Chen number 68 that car run by the Gamma Racing squad Evan Chen new to the championship this season but critting himself very nicely here as he comes out of that uh, long fast left-hander of turn five Evan Chen was the Pro-Am champion last year in fact at Carrera Cup Asia so no stranger to one mate racing although of course these are different in as much as they're longer and there's the pit stop element and there's the co-driver element you don't have to have a co-driver but it splits the costs it also reduces your fatigue in the car Andrew Harianto is uh, one of the soloists Gabriele Moroni is another uphill comes this fight then which is for sixth overall Am car ahead of Pro-Am car here as Evan Chen looks for a way by the leaders plunge downhill towards turn 12 with Artur Janos leading the way at the moment here they come and Janos now starts to edge away as the field accelerates up towards turn 15 so Artur Janos it is by 1.8 seconds starting this lap ahead of Richard Muscat now he in turn has kind of stabilized that gap over Arman Ebrahim. All of these cars, remember, 5.2 litres, 620 horsepower, six-speed sequential gearboxes, they're all on Pirelli tyres, points for the top ten. And unlike the road car, Harakat, two-wheel drive. So if you find yourself off the road, you can't dig yourself out quite as readily. Past the pits they come, and the lead gap, 2.4 seconds. That time around, seven tenths gained by Artur Janos over Richard Muscat. Through turn one they go. And now the drop downhill is there again. Evan Chen having a look to the inside line to try to get himself up past Saru Sarithoranakul, but he can't do it. Sarithoranakul does go wide out of turn one. Is that going to give Evan Chen a chance to challenge as they come downhill? Doesn't look like it. As there, the lead gap continues to extend. Janos, 2.4 seconds ahead now. And what about Muscat to Ebrahim? Last time, Ebrahim lapsed a little bit quick. Sorry, did a personal best, but not as quick as the car ahead. So that gap has also stabilised for the moment previous race on track here was the opening round of Blancpain GT Series Asia, the bulk of which was led by an FFF racing team Lamborghini and it lost out in the last six minutes. So FFF racing team has been denied a win. Right now it's looking in the box seat because Artur Janos is getting away all the time here from Andrea Amici. Richard Muscat second. Andrea Amici will do the second stint in the car and got uh, Arman Ebrahim in third spot. Uphill goes the leader. And where's the next battle going to come from? It's still really to see whether Arman Ebrahim can get onto terms with Richard Muscat, do anything about bringing down that gap, I reckon. But that's on his own is Artur Janos. Downhill he comes. So the leading car into now turn 14. There in the meantime, lower down the order is... 55, that at the back of the pack, in fact, being Daisuke Matsunaga, the Japanese driver for FPC Racing, looking for a way past Pravakaran Kumar, who is in his uh, first race, in fact. Cedric Sprezioli will take over that car and will make it fly, but for the moment, Kumar is uh, still learning about the demands of Lamborghini racing in a new circuit and what it's like to race in these temperatures as well. The race leader has just gone over the timing line. Archer Yanas having done the fastest lap of the race already. Richard Muscat running in second spot. And here's the fight not to be last with the spectacular livery adorning Prabhakar and Kumal's car. Now he's in Pro Am, running fourth in class. And then behind him is Daisuke Matsunaga, who is in Am and running fourth in that category. So uh, Matsunaga on the tail, but really not only does he want an overall place, he wants to get up and pass so he can get onto the tail of his class rivals. Four laps in the book. Leader Janos 2.9 seconds ahead of anybody else now. leaders come over the timing line with the margin extending all the while between the top two and there hard on the brakes down towards turn one number 44 is from the Lamborghini Cup the car of Paul Wong shared by Clement Lee it's the new 852 challengers team and uh, Paul Wong who started a season ago in the Ferrari challenge had an outing in the world touring car races at Macau last year and now coming to a new championship one or two new circuits as well climbs the hill up towards the right 
at uh, turn four. He is in 11th place at the moment in a very distinctive gold car. He's being chased look, by Gabriele Moroni. As there in trouble is Richard Muscat, who has slowed right down. Coming out of turn eight, the car, I think he's like it's had to do a sort of control on delete reset because the wiper comes on as though all the electrics suddenly start again but he's not yet going at a proper pace is he so Richard Muscat from second place limps along up towards turn nine and if that car gets as far as the pit lane I fear that's where it's going to stay oh it's a puncture look at the front left Richard Muscat you just as the car turned got a glimpse of the rubber flailing slightly so it's either a puncture or a wheel that's coming loose after a suspension breakage. Let's have a closer look. The car comes into view. Yeah, possibly not a puncture, more a, a suspension issue, that. But the car, as he turned, seemed that the, Yes, there it is again. Look, the wheel's wobbling. That's a suspension breakage by the look of it. So is that curb induced or has there been contact with another car? But he doesn't want to turn, and Richard Muscat's very definitely in limp home mode. There it is again, look, see the wheel wobbling on the left-hand side. So Richard Muscat crawls down towards turn 14 and effectively is out of the race. Even if they can get the car back in the race, he will lose potentially a lap out of all of this as he has to crawl back to the pits. In the meantime, you've got now Paul Wong versus Gabriele Moroni coming up towards the timing line. Through they come. And the other good battle in the race, Prabhakaran Kumar keeping at bay 55, Daisuke Matsunaga. This, remember, is the contest not to be last. But as they almost overlap coming out of turn 15, Matsunaga tries to get up on the outside line there as they come past the pits. Through they go together. Prabhakaran Kumar hangs onto the place, driving well here, in fact, for a novice. Down towards turn one they go, hard on the brakes, and then plunge downhill. Muscat is doing his best to get home, but this is a long, long limp, isn't it? As the car drags itself back to the pit lane. That long tyre mark in the background being laid by him, yes, because the wheel doesn't want to turn, so he's kind of pushing the tyre along the ground. So, how has that all happened? How has it all come loose? He's going to go, well, he has got a lap down, hasn't he now? Here's the leading car. Artur Janos about to make his way up towards the uh, left-hander at turn 15 and then towards the timing line so Richard Mascant crawling towards the pits Archer Janos up towards the timing line tall Polish driver leads the way through he goes and then a long long gap before Arman Ibrahim arrives in second spot and there down the pit lane comes number two Richard Mascant slowly brings the car back he deserves a round of applause for having got it back, actually, rather than, first of all, abandoning it, and secondly, going so quickly that he did more damage. That's going to put Ebrahim second and Matsumoto third, up to fourth, James Pull. It's still intriguing that James hasn't really been able to fight back. He was run out wide, remember, at the start, but hasn't really been able to, as yet at least, claw back the lost time. He's 11 seconds away from his teammate, who here leads the race. Look. So, Richard Muscat has made it in. They've got a new wheel. And what they want to do first of all is have a look at what damage has been done. And how it's happened. Can't believe it was contact with another car. It doesn't look as though it has been. There aren't any more witness marks on the side. So if it's a breakage, then that's the end of the race, isn't it? The team peers underneath. Life at Motorsport runs that car. Normally one of the best teams within Lamborghini Racing. So, that rather changes the order up front. Janos, Ebrahim, Matsumoto being the top three. There, towards the timing line, having lost a place, Pramakaran Kumar, up and past him, finally has gone Daisuke Matsunaga. And a very technical approach offered up by Leipzig Motorsport. Give it a kick. And that, I think, is confirming the end for the Wilson Banks Leipzig car. Big disappointment. So, Richard Muscat and Ben Gersakowski, the two Aussies, out of the race. They will battle back tomorrow. The grid already, of course, set for that from a standalone qualifying procession. 27 we're looking at is Arman Ebrahim in second place. Now, he shares with Anindith Reddy, who has done limited racing. Brother of Tarun Reddy, seen in single-seaters in the UK, as uh, up now towards the 
help in comes Amon Everhim. He was a regular in the championship last season. Experienced driver, in fact. Over the timing line he comes. Still chasing behind him is Takeshi Matsumoto. And then in fourth place, James Pull. Over the line they go. Who is the quicker of the lot? Pull closing fractionally onto Matsumoto, but only by a couple of tenths. Still got work to do there for to get really into the mix. It's downhill now. Uh, will come. Number 27 then. Arman Ebrahim. 38 downhill, which is Takeshi Matsumoto. He's having an impressive run here, in fact. Matsumoto from the Hojus Racing Team, based in the Student Formula Junior Championship, which he won in 07. It's been a mainstay in the Super Taiku ST2 and ST3 classes of late, and was a class winner in the championship last year, in fact, when he did the uh, Fuji and the Suzuka round, but hopefully this year in for a full season. So Matsumoto going nicely. There he is. You can tell the European teams, and you can tell the Asian teams, can't you? Because the livery is a far more spectacular from this part of the world, and that's one of the more distinctive colour schemes adorning anybody on the grid this weekend. On the 38, the Hojus Racing car, Takeshi Matsumoto, will give way to Toshiyuki Ochiai, multiple Lamborghini champion classes in Pro-Am and Am in the uh, Asian series, and also Carrera Cup Japan champion, so it's another strong car. What's going to be interesting is to see the pace of Andrea Amici relative to Arto Janos in the leading car, because both are quick. I can't believe that uh, Andrea Amici will struggle with that advantage. He should be able to maintain it, if not extend. It's his experience of Lamborghinis goes back even further than does the race leader. So, the pit window will be open in just over three minutes time so two more laps at least for the leading cars to do through goes once more Artur Janos down towards turn one turns the car in the Polish driver came into the championship last season out of karting and was the runner-up in Euro Formula 3 Open, then had a couple of seasons of GP3, and very much found a home for himself in these cars. Like many, a single-seater driver, realising that when the funds run dry, there's a career to be made, and money to be made even, in GT racing, and get paid for doing it, rather than keep paying to race in single-seaters. And like so many, it's a new career move. Another spinner, and that is, I fear, the car of Andrew Harianto, that's got all crossed up, coming out of Turn 15 was, he's down in 8th place, and Takeshi Matsumoto in 3rd is under investigation for the start procedure. So the car in 3rd place, just wondering whether it might end up with some sort of penalty, it's being looked at for the start, taking a while to come up, but the 3rd place car being investigated for a potential false start. We'll see whether there is a penalty to be applied, the stewards will have a look at the evidence and make a call from there. There it is, that's the third place car. Takeshi Matsumoto about to accelerate up out of turn nine. What he's not really doing as yet is anything about Aman Ebrahim. It's a stalemate, second to third, because both have kind of found their pace now, and it's just about a tenth different. But added lap after lap after lap, and it all mounts up in favour of Ebrahim. The leader, Archie Janos, then comes towards the completion of lap number nine. Pit window imminent. There yet for another minute and changed before we get to the pit window opening. Now, Mikko Eskelinen, having gained a place by dint of Andrew Harianto's spin, has also done a personal best lap. Uh, the Finn, who has been in Lamborghini racing for a number of seasons now, concentrating initially on the European and now the Asian series, and also splitting his time between this and quite a bit of rallying that he does. Great competitor. He is up into seventh place and lapping quicker than he had on his previous lap. Here, the leading cars will come through. So you've got Janos through, Ebrahim through, 10.4 seconds it is between them. Matsumoto still third, being investigated. James pulled fourth, and then fifth is 68, Evan Chen, as the leader drops downhill. But this is Aman Ebrahim, 10.4 seconds adrift now. So the margin widening all the time between them. They're 33, that's seventh place, Mikko Eskelinen. Just talking about the fact that he was going quicker. He's on his own at the moment. Comes over the timing line. And as ever, the Mad Croc sponsored driver 
the energy drink. Buckingham goes through and down towards turn one on his own at the moment. Last year, Max Evanal was the co-driver and did a very, very good job. This year, it's the young Finn, Yusuf Wahaka, who's brought into the car. And we'll see how he fares very shortly when he gets behind the wheel because this will be the first time that he's raced Lamborghinis. Wahaka, pit window is open. So, in the case of the Pro-Ams, if the Am started, get him out early, put the Pro in for as long as possible. Some of the Am teams might miss equally. They're side by side up towards the timing line this time around through 44. That is the car of uh, Paul Wong. He has got Gabriele Moroni right behind, now alongside, and about to dive through. Moroni goes 10th on the inside line at turn one. Can he get the car slowed down in time? He can, but only just. But he's done it. He doesn't run out too wide, thankfully, as there down the pit lane is going to be Matsunaga, is it not? So Daisuke Matsunaga to give way to Ken Urata. Pit in, 60 Ks. Hit the line, slow right down. And your pit stop, if you're a double driver entry, remember, has to be 85 seconds line to line. If you're under, you'll get a time penalty to make up the shortfall. It also has come from a Karan Kumar to give way to the highly regarded Cedric Sparazzioli, former Maserati Trofeo world champion. He's raced a huge amount of different uh, championships in GT Ferraris. Sparazzioli, WEC, the LMS, we've seen him in Blancpain. And he will take over the darker green car ready to go and wait wait oh yes that was the problem um Matsunaga was in the wrong pit box so he wasn't leaving early he was just making sure he got to the right place so slightly confused pit stop he'd stopped in the wrong place so Daisuke Matsunaga gets going again and then chugs down the pit lane to find where Ken Arata is busy waving at him Ike Skellenen comes in to give way now to Yusuf Puhaka former Carter former Formula Renault former F4 driver so now we are going to start to shuffle a little bit because of these pit stops. There is 33 down the pit lane. Pit window open board is there for the drivers to see. The teams will be on the radio confirming that. James Paul also is into the pit lane to give way to Jack Bartholomew. Now Jack, the winner of the Middle East Championship. James, the runner-up in the Middle East Championship in the winter months. And it's going to be interesting now to see what Jack Bartholomew can do by way of pace. Former British Formula 4 front runner, then British GT4 and uh, last year drove in the Middle East and the Asian Championships. So 88, coming out of turn 15, Gabriele Moroni. There is the second place car of Amal Ebrahim dropping away all the time now, 11.7 seconds adrift. But up front, Artur Janos has just been dominant in this first stint of the race. He's a long way clear now as the FFF Racing Team car makes its way up towards turn 15. Colours of Roger Dubois watchmaker, championship supporter, as also are Platamina Lubricants, Pirelli tyres, of course, on which everybody runs. And over the timing line with another lap in the book comes Arshio Janos now. There's 27 of mine, Abraham, another lap to be done. Yep, stays out. Last his way up towards the timing line. So 14 we started with and one, of course, that we lost early on, Richard Muscat. So the race lead is currently on to now lap 12. Arshur Janos, the leader. He was at the very back of the grid, how he entered. He didn't uh, get a time in, in the qualifying session, so he started at the very back and is currently running in eighth place, currently serving his pit stop. Next one for the pit lane will potentially be this car because for Arthur Janos, he's getting towards the end of his stint, climbs out of turn nine, but very dominant display. Not a wheel wrong as he put in his opening stint to the race. Arthur Janos, well clear of anybody else, comes now out of the Right hand of turn 12. Breaks his way downhill out of turn 13. And there, Andrew Harrianto had a spin early on. Coming now out 
pit lane shortly. Quick check of the tar pressures. And then that car back into the race. Harry Anto runs in the AM class, so he has got to get himself up past the Surrey Theranical brothers. Their car is yet to stop for uh, Saruan to give way to Saravat Surrey Theranical. There's 63 then out of turn 15, and another lap done for Artyo Janos. Makes his way up past the pits. And it's his race, or their race now, to lose Artyo Janos and Andrea Amici. There in second spot is Aman Ebrahim. And for third, it is still, even though they're. Oh, they were being investigated to Keshi Matsumoto. That message line has gone off the screen. Matsumoto is in anyway, so whether anything comes to this, we'll find out as the race unfolds. But if he comes, there is Aman Ebrahim, now 14 seconds adrift. Also down the pit lane has just come 68, Evan Chen, who has closed right up onto the back of Matsumoto. No further action against number 38. So the stewards have had a look. They are content, and that's problem solved. So no penalties float, unless there's anything now from the pit stops. There with the lights flashing up on its stilts look is a Richard Muscat car as the team at Leipert already start work on that front left corner and try and get it ready for tomorrow where the cars race local time at 20 past 10. It's an early start for them tomorrow. So for the race leader, Artyo Janos, he accelerates for the 13th time up towards turn number nine. Very, very strong effort being put in here. And last year, the championship rather dominated, not completely, but on more occasions, by the K. Cosolino Afik Yazid combination. At the moment, there's nobody stepping forward to show that they've got the pace to run against Amici and Janos. And it's surprising that the sister car has fallen so far away because in qualifying, there was only four tens between them. I suppose if you magnify that over 12 laps, it will become a big gap. But now that Jack Bartholomew is installed behind the wheel, let's see what he can do. Down the pit road has just come 69, which is Han Hoi Lin to give way to Bian Ho. And there is staying out for another lap, I think, 63. Artyo Janos comes out of turn 15, up towards the line now. 88 down the pit lane, Gabriele Moroni, who leads Lamborghini Cup, the Italian driver. So as in comes Aman Ebrahim. And you see the speed differential there at pit in, where it's narrowed, it looks very fast. Wait until he gets to the line. There, nose hits the floor. And that's where you get to the 60kmh board. You've got to be oh so careful down the pit road. Speeding infringements are often penalised, of course. So too are pit stops that are short on time. So the emphasis now is placed on the team to get this absolutely right. And Aman Ebrahim will give way to Anindith Reddy. Also down the pit road has just come Saron Siratharanakol to give way to brother Saron. Oh, sorry, to uh, Saravut Siratharanakol for the pit stop to take place. Drivers you can see on the toes getting ready. One of whom is Andrea Amici waiting his turn. You've got to take your hat off to Artyo Janos. He has absolutely blitzed everybody in his first stint of the race. Nobody has seen him. They might have been able to live with it. And as he comes up towards turn nine, a long way clear, Artyo Janos. He did have one win last year with Toby Sauri in China. And now turns his way up towards the completion of the lap. So the pit window is open, but not for much longer, only another minute and a bit. So really, Amici, uh, sorry, Janot has got to be in this time. Otherwise, they'll be over the time, and then they're going to get a penalty. So Andrea Amici will be ready. Away goes the Abraham entry. The Sarifa Ranicals are ready in the background as well, with Sarovic ready to go. Now, where is the race leader then? Where is Janos? There he is, in this time, right at the very end of the window. Oops. Comes in rapidly, all up the grass, and the runoff on the outside. Now has to hit the brakes, hit the speed limit down, because you don't want to undermine your stint with then giving your co-driver a penalty. Andrea Amici will be ready to take over. 
And so in comes Artyo Janos. Andrea Amici will take over. Very tall Polish driver and coils himself. And then gets back on his knees to do the belts up. The teamwork, you're not finished when you bring the car in. It's not going to help strapping your co-driver. So Andrea Amici is soon to become the race leader. Let's see when he rejoins what the gap is over this car in second place of Aman Ebrahim. And indeed, where he fares relative to the opposition. Give you the order at the end of this next lap where all the pit stops are completed. So there, Janos walks away. And engine fires up. The car will blast away. As long as it stays ahead of this car, in the hands now of Anindith Reddy, all will be good. So 63. Sits and waits, the pit stop time ticks away. Bearing in mind it was leading by about 14 seconds. There it is on its way back down the pit lane. It should not be a problem to maintain the race lead. And it's been a good, smooth pit stop. As long as they don't cross that white line, they'll be clear, well clear in the lead of the race. And then for second place, and Indith Reddy making his way up through turn 15 taken over from Armand Ebrahim. So there it is, out lap completed by Reddy, and the gap at the end of the next lap will be the one to monitor. In third place now, you've got the uh, Japanese entry with Toshiyuki Ochiai for Hojus Racing having taken over. Ochiai, Pereira Cup champion, Lamborghini Super Trofeo Am and Pro-Am champion. But there is Andrea Rimici, well clear now of anybody else through turn six. on the brakes through seven and eight one arc really you can get away with although that's where the track limits are very carefully monitored because if you carry a bit too much speed in you run out wide between the two corners or at turn eight you gain an advantage accordingly so Artyo Janos having done the fastest lap of the race sits and watches now as co-driver Andrea Amici leads the way and Indy Ferretti running in second place gap at the end of this next lap into the last 18 minutes of the race now. It's going on for third. Ochiai versus number 68 of Akihiro Asai and the gap there is only a second. There it is. The two green cars with Akihiro Asai getting quicker and quicker, closing then up onto the tail of Toshiyuki Ochiai. So it's a good scrap this developing between the two Japanese entrants. And at the moment you've got to say the quicker of the two looks like being the Gamma Racing Pro-Am car. Ochiai Matsumoto also in Pro-Am, so it's the class lead fight. Down they come in towards turn 14. Road climbs ever so slightly uphill here. And then that long, long straight up towards turn 15. And drivers will tell you that at the start of a stint, you break at the last possible point. But as the stint wears on, you find yourself breaking earlier and earlier because the brakes inevitably start to get a bit more tired and you need that extra space. And they're almost a wobble under braking from Toshiyuki Ochiai as he breaks hard for the corner. In fifth place is the other one to watch in all of this, Jack Bartholomew. What can he do in terms of bringing down the gap to the cars ahead of him? Let's see what the gap is. It was 11 tenths. It's a second and a half. Now, there he is in the background. So, Jack Bartholomew coming here with a big reputation, British driver, but Middle East champion at the start of the season. Can he catch this battle ahead? Ideally, the answer should be yes, because they really should hold themselves up by squabbling, and that should let Bartholomew uh, pull up onto the tail. 16 minutes are on the clock still as they come downhill. So we're on lap 16. Andrea Amici leads the way. 23.4 seconds to the good now. Then second and third are closing as well because Anindith Reddy, new to the cars, is being caught by Ochiai, who is taking Asai and Bartholomew with him. So we could have quite a big shuffle before the end. Second, third, fourth, and fifth, in fact. It's almost like a handicap race now. You've got the slower driver being caught by the quicker ones. And there are quite a few quicker drivers now hunting him down. Andrea Amici, however, who's had a fairly leisurely first 30 minutes just watching, has now got 20 more minutes, uh, or a 20-minute stint to finish. And he's well clear. 
good first in by Artur Janos has put him up front. And the cars now accelerate their way towards turn 15 with 15 more minutes of the race to go. So through comes 63. Race leading car, Andrea Amici behind the wheel of it. And as Amici goes through, he is. Let's see what the margin is over the opposition. We wait for Anindith Reddy and wait and wait and wait. And Reddy will come to the timing line shortly, bringing with him this battle pack for third, Ochi Asai and Bartholomew. Smoke was that out of the back of Ochi's car? Now, was that was the car lent and it was tar smoke or was that mechanical? Keep an eye to it as they come over the timing line. So, Anindith Reddy 3.4 seconds ahead, and actually, last time he pulled away from Ochi down towards turn one. They go through the hairpin, and the one that's getting all toey in this is in 68 Akihiro Asai. He wants to find a way up and pass, and he goes a bit deep into turn two as they drop downhill here. Climb up the hill and then hard on the brakes for turn four. And a challenge made on the inside line. Asai made his move, but Tochiai couldn't uh, get the car slowed quite in the right time. He ran a bit wide, but he hangs on to it. So Tochiai hangs on to the pace. And actually, out of all of that, Akihiro Asai has delayed himself. So as they came through turn four, it looked like it was the move of the race from Asai, but Tochiai fends him off and also pulls out the gap. So a move that doesn't work, often the heavy braking needed to get out of it, compromises you, and now Jack Bartholomew comes into the mix as well in fifth place. So there's Anandith Reddy out of shot. Behind him, in the darker green, almost turquoise car, it is Toshiyuki Ochiai. Behind him, Akihiro Asai, and then the black car from the front row, remember, Jack Bartholomew now back into the equation. Can he get onto the podium here? He's got 13 minutes to go. They come over the brow. Downhill once more, a little bit wide over the curb there goes Ochiai. But after what, five seasons of Lamborghini racing, he knows the discipline, even though it's this new car for this year, the Super Trofeo Evo, the championship can trace back to the days of the uh, Diablo, then the Gallardo, more recently, and then for the Huracan. So the leader through, Andrea Amici, he's very nearly into race two, so far ahead is he? Um, it's the length of the pit straight and then some before Anindith Reddy comes into view. Anindith Konda Reddy to give him his full title is 24.6 seconds back. Third still is Ochai, just ahead of Asai, just ahead of Bartholomew. There in the traffic is Anindith Reddy trying to lap Gabriele Moroni at turn one and he does get through. Moroni doesn't give him huge amounts of space, but job done. And let's see whether that compromises second place car relative to the chasing pack for third. His last lap was a two minute seven. They were in the eight, so actually he's getting away again. They are delaying themselves by squabbling. 12 more minutes are on the clock as uphill they climb. Traffic goes on in this ready. Putting a lap on Andrew Harrianto's car. Classes, pro very much about Andrea Amici and Artur Janos. Pro Am, it's still the fight for third overall as well. Ochi versus Asai. In Am, the Saritha Ranicals hold sway from Harrianto. And in Lamborghini Cup, it's number 44, the gold Paul Wan Clement Lee entry. Clement Lee, who raced in China GT last year, he's the man at the wheel at the moment. And he is currently second in Lamborghini Cup. Fifty-seven goes through. That is Saravut Saritharanakul leading the AM category by nearly 20 seconds over Andrew Harrianto. Now, last year, Andrew was Mr. Iron Man because he did all of these races in the championship on his own and all of Blanc Pan GT Series Asia, often on his own, over the course of the same weekend. So it was four races he was doing, uh, sometimes without a co-driver. This year he's turned his back on Block Pan GT Series Asia. He won his class in the championship last season, but concentrating on Lamborghinis this year. Andrew, the uh, brother of former Grand Prix racer Rio Harianto, and he goes out of turn seven now. More of an amp racer, but a very accomplished one. So 
there is the second place Amp, Andrew Harianto, who drives for the Top Speed Racing Team, which prepares cars, runs championships, organises events. Big player in Asian motorsport. And heading downhill now. now how's Sprazioli getting on? Cedric Sprazioli, having taken over from Prabhakaran Kumar, is now in ninth place, and that puts him fourth in Pro-Am. He's still got work to do, but his lap time's quicker than pretty much anybody ahead of him, except for the race leader. So Sprazioli, the second quickest man on the circuit, as you look at 44 there, leading Lamborghini Cup. Clement Lee. At the back of the pack at the moment, Kanorata, who has taken over from Daisuke Matsunaga, but he's falling away from Bian Ho, it would appear. So we've got the race leader, currently working lap number 19. There's 88, Gabriele Moroni, who is the second place driver in Lamborghini Cup. Now, he is lapping what? Slower, much slower than Clement Lee. And there's somebody in trouble in the background. Slow car just at the back of the shot. There's Moroni, but coming out of turn six, and he's gone wide at seven. There was a car very, very slow in the background. So let's try and piece together who it is. One car slow. Was it a problem, or was it that he was in danger of running out wide? And stand on everything to bring the car back under control. There is the car in question, I think, which means that it is 69 that was getting it crossed up. Bian Ho, he fights back. He's just gone down a place against Kent Arata, so a change for 12th place. Bian Ho now fighting back as best he can. Andrea Amici goes through, lap ticked off. Utterly dominant, this, and good reward for the FFF racing team, which has been a bit short on luck in this championship in the past. But it all looks to be coming good today. Now here he goes, out of turn two. And he's at turn three, almost turn four, before anybody else has come over the line. And in Dith Reddy, in fairness, doing a good job. And there, up towards the line, goes Jack Bartholomew to make his move against Ochiai. We've had... Akihiro Asai go third and into the lead of Pro-Am. And then for fourth, Jack Bartholomew, yes, goes through on the inside line under breaking for turn one. Trying to fight back is the car of Ochiai, but Toshiki Ochiai stays fifth. And second, of course, therefore, within Pro-Am. So the significance is the lime green car up into the class lead, Akihiro Asai. There's Archie Yanos watching on with the FFF racing team in the pit lane. And he will see his car is well clear, but Jack Bartholomew's sister car, that James Paul started, finally up into fourth place. Race leaders currently working lap 20 then, and we have got, what, seven minutes or so of the race remaining. As there is the car of uh, Yusuf Pohaka going up the inside of 55 to put a lap on Ken Arata, in fairness. Uh, Pohaka is in sixth spot, having taken over from Mikko Eskelen and early on. So, as the race has now just under seven more minutes to go, you're looking at Pohaka up towards the completion of the lap. Pohaka, who started off in karting before he came into 1600cc Formula Renault racing and then into Formula 4 in Spain and also the North European zone, the Estonian Russian Championship. 44, meantime, leading the Lamborghini Cup. That is Clement Lee. 18 is Andrew Harianto, falling further away, sad to say, in Am. And Andrea Amici puts 20 laps in the book now, with six minutes and a bit still on the clock, which is what three more laps it will take. There on his own is Cedric Sprazioli who is lapping in the two minute sevens. He is the second fastest man on the circuit at the moment. It's pretty impressive. Yes, it comes well regarded from Ferraris and Maseratis, but even so, Cedric's perhaps too early. Going very strongly indeed. Pit lane, the team Wakayama engineers look on. There is 98. So, Sprazioli pushing, pushing, pushing. This car that Prabhakaran Kumar was driving in the opening stint from uh, 12 on the grid. Cedric Sprazzuoli moving into Lamborghini racing this season. It's not much he's not raced, the former Maserati champion, but uh, Ferraris, he has been busy 
multiple long distance championships in recent seasons. Over the timing line, there is the number 69 um, entry of Bian Ho. Took over from Han Hoi Lin. And Gabriele Moroni there chases on behind Justo Pohaka, but they're on different laps, so it's not a battle for position, only for pride. As Jack Bartholomew hunts down now Akihiro As uh, Asai, can he get third place away? He's got five minutes in which to do it. In theory, he should be able because he was quicker in qualifying. There's the leader still, Andrea Amici, on his own. Turning his way through. And now the run up towards the left-hander at turn 15. But he is so far up the road at the moment. This is looking very impressive indeed. Not only for this race, but tomorrow as well. The opposition will have a bit of head-scratching overnight to try to work out what on earth they can do to stop them. So for tomorrow's race, it would be Ben Gertakovsky starting from pole, and Michi, oddly, only fifth quickest in his qualifying session. So it's going to be interesting tomorrow to see, from a completely different grid, how this car fares. And the drivers, perhaps therefore, will have a bit more optimism overnight. All race long, by the way, the driver ID system has been offering random numbers and random names for the leading car. Apparently, it's their driver ID switch that is broken, so the timekeepers tell us. So it's about the only thing that hasn't gone their way in this race. Broken switch inside the car, but you know it's Andrea Amici at the wheel because we saw Arcio Janos unfold himself from within, and we've seen him in the pit garage watching on. And indeed, Reddy has done a very good job in second place. Limited experience, but actually, rather than be caught by the pack behind, he's managed to maintain uh, the pace and has hung on to second spot. Asai is keeping at bay Jack Bartholomew as best he can. It's four tenths between the two of them. That could yet change before the very end, though, as they're really pushing Cedric Sparazzi early, way wide up the kerb. The car draws attention to itself by its colour, but when he puts Sparazzi early behind the wheel, it kind of wakes up. It becomes a different beast altogether. And he is going after Harry Anto, but he's not going to catch him. He's a minute behind, give or take. So some of the gaps, very large ones indeed. 27 and in the thready, three seconds up the road against Asai. Looking very strong indeed here. And then what have we got for fourth place? Jack Bartholomew still hunting down Asai, but clear of Ochiai behind him. So the race leader is going to get two more laps out of this. Potentially, let's see, it's going to be touch and go, but there should be just time for two more laps. It's two and a half minutes on the clock and two minutes six for a flying lap. It shouldn't take too much time to get to the timing beam. So he will come across the line with, let's see how long to go. Two, <laughs> two minutes and 15 for a two minute six lap, so two more. He could back right off, he's got so much in hand. The team could tell him to just make this the last lap and crawl around. He's got huge gap over anybody else but Andrea Amici who has uh, gone a long time between wins in this championship wants a victory Cedric Sparazzioli still pushing on and Sparazzioli is down in ninth place as there the race leader pounds downhill for the penultimate time unless somebody gives him a real shout over the radio to say back off back off and in ready 31 seconds back so over half a minute between the top two. Third still at Asahi, and Bartholomew is closer again. Three tenths back now, but he hasn't been able to make the move as yet. So on lap 23, race leader comes through turn seven and eight. 63 it is, Andrea Amici behind the wheel of a car that has never been headed in this race. It's scarpered early on has looked mighty indeed up towards the uh, nine climb comes Amici and with under a minute to go as I say there is time for one more lap given the pace in the car but then it again what were you looking for So there, race leader down towards turn 14. And as I say, he could crawl to the end from here. But Andrea Amici is a racer, he's a fighter. 
and he will push, 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 and therefore be able to squeeze one more lap out of the race. Out of turn 15, and the last lap board is going to be ready for him this time because for about the sake of 10 seconds or so through he will get onto one more lap Let's see over the timing line now and that was with six seconds so once more around he will go flag goes out the first time the leader crosses the line after the 50 minutes are up they're up now but we've got to wait for the leader to come back around as i say had it been a slower lap by six seconds he would have taken the flag as there battles are still raging on including 68, which is the hard charging Asai. Behind him is Jack Bartholomew. Now, Bartholomew is somebody that did want the extra lap, so he's got his wish. Over the timing line they come, nose to tail for third place. The gap between the two of them is half a second as they go down to turn one. And Jack Bartholomew is still not really close enough to make the move there on the inside line. He's trying to force a mistake, really, out of Akihiro Asai, but as yet, it's not happening for him. Asai having forced his way up into third and of course leading in Pro-Am is determined not to be denied in all of this. Downhill he goes then for the last time. Up towards turn four, hard on the brakes. Jack Bartholomew tries to close up there, see if he can do anything about the third place car of Asai. Gamma Racing entry, but it's going to be a 1-4 seemingly for the FFF Racing team. James Paul started, Jack Bartholomew finishes in fourth place one, uh, but after a great opening stint by Artio Janos, Andrea Amici will bring it home, he plunges downhill, up towards turn 14, look at all the rubber junk to the side of the road after a busy day of single-seaters and of GT cars and touring cars, the local touring cars around here, and even some very, very heavy mid-afternoon rain, hasn't uh, washed it all away. So up towards the chequered flag, this time will come Andrea Amici and Artio Janos and Andrea Amici can celebrate in silence. So too can the FFF racing team. Sean Fu Song Yang's team as he comes now up towards the timing line. Andrea Amici and Artio Janos win the opening round of the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia. Across the line comes number 63 for the delighted FFF racing team in the background. Cedric Sparazzoli will come through for ninth place and fourth in Pro-Am and await and await and await the class positions to fall 27 it should be for second in Pro which will be and indeed Conlon's ready there to the timing line comes the Indian entry of Reddy and Aman Ibrahim and third and a win in Pro-Am goes the way of 68 Evan Chan and Akihiro Asai, so the third of the pros, Jack Bartholomew and James Paul. Pro-Am won by Ochai and Asai, uh, by uh, Chen and Asai, I should say. Second, Toshiyuki Ochai and Takeshi Matsumoto. And the third Pro-Am, Miko Eskelenen and Yuso Kohaka. And then for the Ams, it's the Sarifa Ramakul brothers from Andrew Harianto. And then... Ken Arata and Daisuke Matsunaga. Lamborghini Cup is going to be a first win, first time out victory for Paul Wong and Clement Lee, ahead of Gabriele Moroni. And it's just those two starters, isn't it? Just those two within the Lamborghini Cup as the field pours over the line. Through goes Siri Veronical, Andrew Harianto. Closing towards the end, brought the gap down markedly on that last lap, so the gap was almost down to a challenging position for Andrew Harianto, but it was not quite to be. As Andrea Amici and Artio Janos celebrate honours then in the first Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia round of the season, and Evan Chen and Akihiro Asai celebrate a pro am victory. But there, Andrea Amici blitz the opposition, and a job very well done indeed. Drivers make their way back into the pit lane, go to the very outside of the road now to try and get some pickup on the tyres. Make sure the weight of the car is as heavy as it can be when they get to the technical checks. Now the seasoned pros, they know exactly where to put the car, how to do these in laps. And 
Andrea Amici and Artio Janos have laid down a marker, but it'll be interesting to know overnight what the problem was for the Richard Muscat and Ben Gersakowski car that will start tomorrow on pole position thanks to Ben's time in the second qualifying session. So to the multitudinous podium the drivers will go. Andrea Amici and out of the window. And now to slower speed, I feel much more off inside that car. Although the little window is open. in is uh, not coming in as quickly and very very hot out it's been a very very humid day as ever but the rain mid-afternoon rather than getting rid of the humidity has brought it back with a vengeance so the driver certainly in the early gt race in the mid-afternoon slot here have been really wilting in the temperatures and often that's one of the cases why the ams have uh, varying laps varying pace because the temperatures take their toll so into park ferme comes the caravan in dithredi and and every him there, the winning car for Park Ferme to arrive in a moment will be Artur Janos and Andrea Rimici, the winners of the opening Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia race of 2018. And Amici looked up on the grass there to get the pickup of the tyres, hot, sticky, rubbery tyres, plus all the detritus that's trackside, add them together, soon sticks to the rubber. Ferme comes then the race winning FFF racing team entering the teams making their way up pit lane joining the celebrations door <laughs> opens and complimenti Andrea Andrea Imici out of the car Archer Janos a delighted co-driver there to receive him and a good way to open the partnership with a race win Perfect stint. Wins by just under half a minute at the end from Andy Dithroni and Martin Abraham. And for third place, the car of Michel. And I can hear that second which came good in that uh, final part of the first stint and certainly in the second part of the race. There, they've been on lap before. Martin Abraham and Andy Dithroni. It's got life. But uh, ready for an obvious and a very, very good job there. Putting himself to <coughs> second spot and maintaining good pace and not being caught, not losing places to the opposition. Now the car's now being given the Park Ferme tags, which means that the mechanics can do nothing to them. If they do, they break Park Ferme regulations and then they're in real strife. Let's have a look at the highlights then of this opening race of Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia for 2018. So the lights went to green, a good start by Richard Muscat from the third row of the grid, he was on his toes, he got up the inside, and off like a robber's dog as the cars accelerated down towards turn one. He made his move for third, he came second, so good was it, as James Paul on the outside line rather got elbowed out, so he lost second and he lost third and he was on the wrong line all the way down towards turn three. Up front though, charging on to build the advantage. 63, Artur Janos, and once he was ahead, there was just no stopping him. The gap wide and wide throughout the stint as battles raged on behind. And certainly as the stint wore on, Evan Chen was getting more and more confident. He picked his way up past the car of Siraf Aranakul and then made his move into contention for third place overall. As the cars work their way in towards the pit stop window. Hanging on to second place was Aman Ebrahim, but he was dropping away from the leader. Instead, the car to watch became that of James Paul and Jack Bartholomew as it crept into contention against the Hachiai entry just up the road ahead that had been started and started impressively by Takeshi Matsumoto. Battles raged on lower down the order as well. Gabriele Moroni fighting with the Paul Wong Clement lead car, and all of that, of course, for honours in Lamborghini Cup pit stop window opened and of course time spent in the pit lane would be crucial. Generata took over from Matsunaga on track and Indith Reddy had taken over in 27 from Aman Ebrahim but it was third, fourth and fifth which then became the centre of attention as the gaps came down the drivers started to push amongst them Akihira Asai who went up into third and then right at the very end up into fourth Jack Bartholomew fighting his way right up alongside 
Toshiyuki Uchiai on the run down towards turn one. Uchiai had to give way. And Bartholomew went forth. Two of them nose to tail out of the corner and then down the hill. As up front, it was all still about Andrea Amici as he led the way. And into sixth spot was coming Mikko Eskelinen and also for Hacker's car. As far as the FFF racing team was concerned, it was to be a very good day indeed. Winning by just under half a minute, Andrea Amici and Artur Janos at the end of round one of Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia 2018. Aman Abraham and Anindith Konda ready, taking second place a long way back. And then third going the way of Pro-Am winning car from Gamma Racing, Evan Chen and Akihiro Asai. Winners Winners Andrea Amici and Archie Janos then make their way up towards the podium, which they will be for. And we will be there in a moment to uh, welcome the drivers for the conclusion of Super Trophy Asia round one here at Sepang. Race two coming up tomorrow morning. Temperatures may be a little different. We'll see what the weather gods have in store for us. Confirmation of the results. Amici and Janos, the winners from Reddy and Ebrahim. Third, Asai and Chen. Fourth, gave the way of Bartholomew and Paul ahead of Occhiai and Matsumoto. And then in sixth spot, Eskelinen and Osaka. The one retirement that we had being Richard Muscat and Ben Gersikowski, the pole car, for tomorrow's second race. Podium ready then. And Pro, Pro-Am, Am and Lamborghini Cup honours to take place. So we have then the Trophy Girls ready. And drivers will be called forward shortly, of course, with two drivers to a car and four classes. It takes a little bit of time to get everybody up to the podium. So bear with. There as soon as for the first Super Trofeo Asia podium of the season. So the drivers, I can hear all the background being announced. They will venture out in a moment. There are lots of photographers, there are lots of teams all stood opposite. And also interesting to note that to cheer Amar Ebrahim and uh, and in Dithredi is at Patel out of the Block GT Series Asia race from earlier. We have then the winners, Andrea Amici and Archer Janos making their way on to the top step of the podium. They'll be joined in a moment by Anin Dithredi and Amar Ebrahim that they are. And differing levels of experience there. And then for third place, you've got the Pro-Am winners, Asai and Chen. Evan Chen, the Taiwanese driver, started. The Japanese driver, Akihira Asai, Second stint, and Lamborghini's R&D director, Maurizio Reggiani, steps forward with the trophies. So, a fine effort. Evan Chen in the spectacles, receiving the trophy. There is Anin Dithredi, newcomer to Super Trofeo, with old hand now, Aman Ebrahim. And then the uh, race winners, Archio Janos and Andrea Amici. Complimenti, Andrea. Italian driver along with the pole. Archer Janos then, a pair of them on the top step, and now Pirelli hand over the winning trophy as well to the team. So well done to the pro drivers. And everybody gets together for the photographs at the end of an excellent first race as far, certainly, as Andrea Amici and uh, Archer Janos are concerned. Utterly dominant. Utterly, utterly dominant. But tomorrow, after an Amici time, fifth on the grid. So we'll see how easy it is for them to get up through the traffic, whether it's just going to be a, a win. If it is a win, can it be as dominant as today? So it's certainly not to suggest they're going to dominate the season. That's for sure. So well done to the winning drivers who await the champagne. There it is, being brought forward. And there's one last photograph to be snapped. If you don't want to get wet, sir, I'd run. Now, he's braver. He's braver than I thought. That'd be wetter than he thought, but he's brave. So, champagne sprayed, and those the top three overall are in the
Pro-Am podium in a moment. And of course, it'll be uh, Evan Chen and his co-driver, Akihiro Asai, for the top step there once more. I'll be back on the podium. So, super job done, got to say, by the FFF Racing team. A busy squad splitting efforts across the uh, Super Trofeo as well as the uh, Blanc Pain GT Series Asia and coming through victorious in this race for an overdue win. So we shall shortly have the Pro-Am drivers up onto the podium at the end of this first race of the weekend and we look forward to another competitive season within this championship. Trophy girls ready. This first race that we've seen, of course, in Asia for the new car, the Evo. Our account of Trofeo Evo. And it's certainly been a big hit. I think the drivers have enjoyed the extra speed and the uh, extra pace that the car has. And so now up onto the podium come the winners from Pro Am. So Evan Chen and Akihiro Asai are back. And up onto the second step come Mika Eskelinen and uh, Yusuf Ohaka. And then we await for. Uh, sorry, they are third, I should say, and second already there, aren't they? Uh, because Takeshi Matsumoto and Toshiki Uchiai crept in unannounced as uh, Giorgio Sana there. Former Lamborghini racer, but now the man who heads Lamborghini Squadra Corsa. Looks on as the representatives of Roger Dubois now make their way forward with the trophies for third. Mikko Eskelinen and his new co-driver, which for this season is uh, Yusuf Ohaka. Trophies aloft, therefore second place are Takeshi Matsumoto and Toshiyuki Uchiai. And then the class winners, Evan Chen and Akihiro Asai. So, Rally hand over the trophy as well. And there, trophy girls return, ready for the group photograph. And Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia, which continues to go from strength to strength with excellent racing, with new drivers coming in season after season. And it's had uh, a good start to 2018. And the fact, as I say, that we've got a, a jumble grid for tomorrow as well. It's an intriguing race that we have in prospect. So, trophies presented, champagne to be sprayed. Two more podiums, of course, still to come. The AMs will be next. And then following them, they will be the gentlemen racers from the Lamborghini Cup. So there, the uh, Pro-Am drivers are done. Thank you, chaps. Bye-bye, comes the call. In other words, off. You're done. And Am will be next, where that was a Category 1 by the PSC team of Sarun and Saravat Slavithoranakul. Second went to Andrew Harianto on his own, and third, Ken Arata and Daisuke Matsunaga from the back of the grid. In fact, in fairness, it was Harianto that was even further back because he didn't do a qualifying session and uh, was right at the rear. At the last mark finish was last. So the drivers should be being brought forward. Apologies for the delay. The AM category for the gentleman racer but with a bit more experience than a complete rookie, for example. And uh, Andrew Harianto has been very successful. Um, probably a bit of a pro-am now, but by dint of staying on his own and not having a co-driver, he can't really be upgraded, so it's a tactical decision, this. There is Andrew Harianto, steps out. 
to join class winners Sarun and Saravat Saritharanakul and there for third place, 55, Kenorata and Daisuke Matsunaga. Kenorata had a busy day because he was also in Broad GT Series Asia. It's BMW, so he's been busy. And there is Giorgio Sana. This racing goes back to the days of the Gallardo rather than the Hurricane. He's been very busy running Lamborghini Squadron Corsa since. And in the old dark days, Lamborghini's motorsport was not really very well structured. It didn't really have much care and attention and love and time and personnel but a decision to make a motorsport unit full-time concentrate on the development of that program and put Giorgio Sama in charge has reaped dividends and the Super Trofeo has just blossomed in the last what, six years or so um, small grids and it was a bit of an old championship but it really has come on a pace in the last few seasons and it's a very obvious fever category now to GT3 racing so trophy's done and Last photographs for the AM drivers about to take place. And there, the champagne is brought forward. And one or two try and run away. Oh, no, you don't. But the class winners, the three Theranicals, are taking their time about this before they get overly celebratory. So that leaves us with one more podium, and that is for the Lamborghini Cup drivers, of which there were just two uh, combinations, two entrants, two teams. We've also got at the moment, by the way, Lamborghini hot laps taking place at the last few podiums of the day, echoing to the sound of more Lamborghini engines, which seems like the perfect soundtrack. And as the last couple of photographs are done, the AMs will be next. And it was the car of uh, Paul Wong and Clement Lee that was victorious from. Gabriele Moroni taking second place. So the podium is uh, being made ready. And as soon as the drivers are called forward, we'll be just about done for the day here at Sepang for this opening race of Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia. And trophies for first and second only this time around, no third, and now that people are in the right place, so out will come the drivers, so for second in Lamborghini Cup, Gabriele Moroni, but the class winners are Paul Wong and Clement Lee, they make their way to the top step, second place Gabriele Moroni will make his way out to join them, and handshakes all round. The nice thing about this, even though it's a very competitive championship, is that there's a, a good hospitality element to it. So everybody spends time with their rivals, relationships forge, and Maurizio Reggiani is the man who steps forward to hand over the trophies to our second place driver, Gabriele Moroni, and then to the winners, who are Clement Lee and Paul Wong. They will celebrate in time-honoured fashion in a moment. The photographs will be taken. Pirelli step forward also with the trophy for the class winner. And so, as the trophies are held in the air, it's the final podium for Lamborghini Super Trofeo Asia round one here from Sepang. Tomorrow's race will be at 10.20 in the morning. Join us for that if you can. But for now, from Sepang, from David Addison, it's bye-bye.